here on a Monday, Cookie Crush Chat. Are you still undefeated? We're going to find out tonight. Let's get it. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming, FDMG, it's coming, 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 it's coming. MG is coming, thought it's personality, be twerking, it's twerking. Mm. All right, there you have it. Thank you all so much for tuning on in. Cookie Crush Chat, I don't know, are y'all, y'all was like 400 and old? Are you 401? You Are you no longer undefeated? We're going to find out tonight because there's been some things happening online dealing with this FDMG school scam. It's fraud. It's also cybercrime. Okay. Have a degree in cybersecurity. It is. It's cybercrime. Uh, but the interesting thing about the, the length of this hustle, this scam, this long con is that we're talking 13 years of this. And you know, if the internet did not exist, this would not, it would not have gone on this long, this school scam. There's no way. Umar has used the internet to gain the confidence of people under the guise of opening up a school for black boys. He's taken millions of dollars by now. I even had someone comment. He said, Umar never said that he collected man. Well, I can pull up the receipt. First, he said we got one man. Then he says we almost got a man. That was back in 2017 or was it 2018? So don't don't tell me that Umar hasn't raised a million dollars. Okay. And based upon what he said over the years, over the last 13 years, he should be close to 2.5, close to $3 million by now. How is it possible for someone to run this type of a scam for 13 years? Well, it's cybercrime. The internet has been used to conduct crime. Umar, in essence, is a cyber criminal. Okay? It's, it's fraud. Same thing with Jay Morrison. It's fraud. Same thing with Cesar Pena. It's fraud. Same thing with uh, Polite. It's fraud. Polite's now giving, you guys can't, you ain't gonna believe this. Polite is now giving mentorship programs. He's running mentorship programs from prison. <laughs> I wish I could. How are you going to run a mentorship in prison? And you got what, six, six, seven years? He should have been there for 20, but they gave him, he took a plea deal. And you're doing mentorship programs? How is this possible? Through the internet. It's cybercrime. <laughs> it is, it's so ridiculous. But that's no different than what Umar is doing and has done now for 13 years. So, there's been some interesting developments, things that Umar has said recently. And thanks to everyone who's been sending me videos. I've, I've been away uh, for about eight months, getting back into it now. Uh, I want to start the series on DJ Envy Cesar Pena this week. It'll probably be on Wednesday, but don't hold it to me. Okay, I, I have to, I got overtime. It's forced overtime. I'm tired right now. I hope that you guys can get me through. Uh, work through the weekend over three days. I did 36 hours. And I'm not a spring chicken. <laughs> That's why I'm in good shape. I was talking to my wife this morning. I was like, yeah, you know, uh, I don't, I know I, my birthday's coming up next week too. I said, I know I'm getting close to 50, but I don't, I don't look like it. I said, I don't feel like it either. She says, you're right about that. But I think it's because of uh, the, the diet that I've been on for most of my life. <laughs> I've been eating them. 
I've been, I'm sorry. I've been eating in Walmart every once in a while. I have me a Walmart donut. I ain't going <laughs> to. Okay, let, let me let's stay focused. We got to get into this. I'm already going off on a tangent. Uh, so I want today what I want to do. There's four videos. They're relatively short and I want to try to have a shorter show. I know we've been going longer in the more recent videos, but that's because I've been away and I want to kind of get caught up. So I've been putting a little extra time in. And thank you all so much, uh, Cookie Crush Chat, for being here. Our goal for today is uh, 200 likes uh 400 likes and then 500 likes that's our goal for today i'll put it in here 200 likes and then 400 likes and then let's go 550 i'm gonna be greedy 550 let's do 600 we're gonna go for 600 maybe we'll get lucky tonight all right and i'll go ahead and put this in the chat room that will be our goal all right uh, Cook Rochelle, thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. I wish I could live stream on the weekends, but I'm I've just been busy with the overtime. This I I I this is gonna be the schedule from for now, Monday and, and Tuesday for sure. But I want to start the series on um Caesar Pena, uh DJ Envy on Wednesday, but we're gonna have to wait and see how things go. Okay. Um I like to start with a uh video update from umar dealing with fdmg uh the irony of this is that he's doing these updates claiming that the school is renovated but if the school is renovated why are you doing updates outside of the school that's called critical thinking if Umar has been doing renovations for four and a half. It's over four and a half years now. It's 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 getting close to being five years. In February, it'll be five years. We're in November this month. In three months, it's going to be five years. But if you have been talking about your renovating and you've been collecting money to do it for four and a half years and renovations are basically complete. That's what he said. We've been covering this. This is what I mean by fraud. It's cybercrime. Uh, wouldn't you live stream from inside of the building, buildings, showing all the renovations, talking? Because that's what I would do. I'd say, look over here. You know, we patched up this hole right here. Right here, we got some carpet put in. Right here, we got the light fixed. Right here, this is this is the desk. Right here, this family. This right here. This right here. This right here. And I'll be going through. And that would that you know what that would do? That would make Cookie Crush Chat undefeated. I can't even say defeated. I meant to say defeated. I can't even say it. Can't lie. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying I can't lie. I wish I could. You guys are undefeated, but you know, if he did that, we would have okay. He he wins. He won something. I can't even say it because you know. Uh, but that's not what he does. If you notice, he's outside and it's cold. He's you know he's huddled up like this, and this is the same thing that's been going on for four and a half years. I don't get it. I don't see why Umar Johnson. One other thing, real quick. Then, then I'm gonna get to this this super chat. Then we're gonna get into it. Um, it amazes me. Uh, how's it going, Jasmine? It amazes me how Umar Johnson supporters, when you guys send me messages, you say the same thing. You repeat exactly what Umar Johnson says. It's either, uh, you know, another black man trying to tear another black man down. I don't want to hear that, because if you've taken over close to three million dollars out of the black community under the guise of opening up a school and the school is still not, it's been going still not open. Uh, and it's been going on for 13 years, that's deserving of criticism and so, for someone to hold that person accountable. And that's what I've been doing. That's what the Cookie Fresh Hat has been doing. But you know what's interesting is that the person, the preeminent individual who speaks poorly about black people, in particular successful black men, is Umar Johnson. We have a whole list. And you know what? One of these days we're going to do a live stream. We're just going to focus on that list because there's so much more that we can add. And he doesn't just target uh, successful black people. He especially, he, especially uh, athletes. Deion Sanders, Shannon Sharp. Uh, the list goes. Charles Barkley. The list goes. And it's okay to have criticisms, but when it, in it when the barrage is consistent, when is the last time y'all heard Umar say something positive about a black person? I'll wait. He'll talk about himself being Big Papa and I'm the greatest. But when is the last time Umar Johnson follows? When's the last time you heard Umar Johnson? Say something positive about a black person. And then let's take this a step forward, us further. When, if you heard him say something positive about a black person, when was the last time you heard him say something positive about a black person prior to that? And then prior to that, and then prior to that. Okay, now, you, now your mouth is hanging. But if I asked you, when was the last time you heard, I don't mean to be pointing, I'm sorry. Look, what if I asked y'all, 
uh, when was the last time Umar Johnson said something negative about a black man? You got the, this, what, yesterday? <laughs> he does, and it's not this black man. He does it to black women, too. I remember he was going off on Beyonce with the blonde weed. Then he asked Jay-Z for some money. He went off on Jay-Z one time. Kanye went off on Kanye, but then said he had a snow bunny crisis. But I remember he even went on the breakfast club and was talking about that young athlete. She's half, uh, I think, Japanese and half uh, black African-American. I can't think of her name right now. And he went off on her. Why? He's supposed to be a school psychologist. He's supposed to be helping the people. He's supposed to be big papa. And yet he takes any and every opportunity to disparage black people. And then when I criticize Umar, which is well deserved, Y'all going to tell me I'm trying to tear down another black man? No, I don't think so. You're just repeating what Umar Johnson says. See, interesting enough, he tells people that because he doesn't want to be criticized. Oh, they're just haters. But I'm the one that said, listen, all Umar Johnson does is talk mess about black people. And interesting enough, someone sent me a clip where now he's saying we need to stop that. He says that because he watches these videos and it's hypocritical because he's the preeminent individual who has had consistent beef with black people online. So, uh, Sauron Sutton Seti, Tariq Nasheed, Boyce Watkins. Again, not my cup of tea, but still the point is the point. See, okay, I don't mean to be going off on a tangent. We're going we're gonna to leave that right there. Join the uh, John the professional. Umar is raking in millions, raking in millions of dollars. Brother Polite is mentoring uh, for money in prison. He sure is. <laughs> Maybe I should quit my day job. <laughs> That's crazy, though. How are you going to be mentoring people and you in jail? And then you know what he's he took a plea, but you know what his his uh, people he he's going to understate this. But the the truth is that uh, what he was accused of and the charges that he was facing initially. Are very telling in and of himself, in and of itself. But for him to be up there uh, now, trying to do mentorship uh, from from prison, you know, it's going to be interesting because when he gets out, if he gets out, he's going to very he's going to have a very difficult time rebounding from this. There are going to be some people that's going to go for the okie doke, but he's going to have a very difficult time. It's over with. See, it's over with. But you know what, John the professional, this uh, brother polite would not have been able to do what he was able to do with the scamming and so forth. If it hadn't been for the internet. And that's what you call cyber crime. I can't tell you how many people they, they've, uh, done videos or they made comments talking about how they sent them $2,000 for mentorship, mentorship program. Never got any quote unquote mentor mentoring. That's cyber crime. Okay. And again, I have a degree in cybersecurity. All right. Uh, thanks for, uh, for the super chat, uh, John, the professional. Okay, so let's get into because I want to have a shorter show uh, uh, tonight. Yeah, same thing with Pina. That's cyber crime. That that's totally cyber crime. Getting on a platform like uh, uh, the Breakfast Club, which its outreach is not just like over the airwaves. It's also on, mainly, uh, I would think, it's mainly on the internet these days. Okay. Oh, no, maybe, maybe not. But whatever the percentage would be, it's still significant. That that for them to have these uh, scammers and charlatans and these. Um, uh, fraudsters on consistently like this, Polite, Jay Morrison, Umar Johnson, they're contributing to cybercrime. And you see what's going on with, with Cesar Pena and DJ Envy now. Umar got the nerve to get up there and say, I'm not going to, uh, they're just, crit they're, they're, I can't remember, I, I'm paraphrasing, but it's just the haters basically with what's happening with DJ Envy. I'm going to wait to see what happens. Okay, Umar, the only reason why you're doing that is because you want to get on that breakfast club again. Why? Because you know that once you get on the breakfast club, the numbers, they're going to get the numbers. So you want to side with DJ Envy right now. Uh, Charlemagne, uh, the, no, Charlemagne, his background too is suspect. We'll leave it at that. Okay. But if you, you want to get on there because you know that once you get on there, you're going to be introduced to even more people to run your school scam and get more money out of, out of them. And you've already, Umar's already stated that, that, that one of the Preeminent uh, platforms that put him on and really opened him up to a new audience. I can pull up the I can pull up the video right now. Was the Breakfast Club itself? Just like with Caesar Pena, it was the Breakfast Club. Well, that's cyber crime. So he defends DJ Envy early on, just like there are people who were defending uh, Polite. No, see what people fail to realize about Polite was that he had already had some other issues going back prior to that. Two other instances were in there was some sort of a situation dealing with him and younger uh, underage girls. 
two other situations and one of them was is really complex okay it's complex because the state had to get involved we're going to set that aside right now so no he's defending e, uh, envy initially because he wants to position himself to where he can get back on the breakfast club so once he gets on the breakfast club he can he can gain a, 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 a greater audience again to sell this school scam to get donations for a school that does not exist the other thing and now this is going to be it you umar johnson follow what y'all be doing when you leave his message you say well he has a school no he doesn't that's delusion you're delusional a school is a place of learning go look it up it's a place of learning it could be a building. It could be online. It could be brick and mortar. OK, cybersecurity is another thing I have to study de dealing with uh, 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 e-commerce. But the point is that that it, it's a place of learning. People are there to learn. It could be children there. It could be uh, uh, adults there. It doesn't matter. It has to be a place of learning. Is that what we have up there? We're going to look at some video right now. Y'all tell me, is that a place of learning? It's not. How, then therefore, how can it be a school? What Umar did was he purchased some abandoned building for $400,000, pocketed the rest of the money. And now here we are almost five years later. There's still no school. And y'all saying he got a school. That's delusion. But you know what? You're just repeating what Umar says. See, that's called mind control. You have to have your own critical thought. You have to think critically about this. And some of y'all, you're unwilling to do that. Well, that's OK. Keep on giving up that cheddar, give up that cheese, give up that bread. And just understand that not one child is going to be serviced. And thank goodness, because Umar ain't got no business being around with children anyway. OK. Let's get to it. Lewis, what's up, what's up, man? Says, come on, Lennon. Don't uh, be so hard on a black man. Get a few more months. <laughs> give him a, give a few. How many more months? How many more months are we going to get, get Umar? Seriously. <laughs> this, is, this is another. But Lewis, I know you're playing. But Lewis, like, this is another thing that Umar, that Umar Johnson follows be saying. He needs time. You know, and they, it's this is what Umar says. Same thing. Well, you know, we're not getting any government funding and we're only getting money from black people. And that's why it's taking so long. There's no reason that if someone has collected close to two million dollars that he can't have some school as a place of learning, whether it's physical or, or, or virtual. There's other people who've done it without that amount of money. What's the one guy? People always talk, talk, tell me about this young, younger guy. He's like in his 20s. He, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, uh, Randall, uh, King Randall. Uh, he he was able to put together something. Umar, why can't you do it? And you're a big papa. You got you have uh, 18 degrees uh, allegedly. <laughs> Should you be able to pull us up, dog, with two million dollars? No. And and I would propose that it's more than two. I would say that he's closer to three million dollars by now because this goes back to uh, 2013. Uh, excuse me, 2009. In 2010, he said that the school was going to open in 2013. It's a decade late. How many more months? You got to tell me, Louis Luck, how many more months should we, we give this? Okay, I took a break for eight months. I come back and it's the same thing. Ain't nothing changed. All right, we got 623 people to go. Thank y'all so much. If y'all can hit the like button, I appreciate it. Uh, T. Jones has uh, uh, says, we ain't, gonna, we ain't gonna get into that. <laughs> it made me wanna play. This is what I mean by how he's a charlatan. He says he's related to Frederick Douglass and his daddy took a DNA test. The DNA test comes back and they're not related. There's no genetic match. Uh, but Umar continues to run with, and one time T. Jones, ooh, and thanks for being a member for 35 months. One time Umar said that he, quote unquote, might be related to Harriet Tubman. Do I need to pull up the receipt? Cookie Crush chat hit the one. I can pull, and it'll just take, it won't take but a second. I can pull it up, we play it, and then we get to the video for today. Let me know, okay? Thanks, T. Jones. Let me, let me let me go look in here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. We had two fourteen. Cool, cool. We had two fourteen. Yeah, I think I think that's one. okay. Billy Jean says okay. We're gonna do it good. Well, how's it going, Tata? What's up, information man? Salute, man. Yeah. All right. Let me let me go and light up one of the. I'm trying to see if we're gonna do a, a birthday thing. I don't I don't know because I probably be at work. My schedule is it's, it's wild. It's wild and crazy. Okay, so we got one like we reached our first goal. Thanks. So what's up, Barry? Thanks for being here. And Cletus, <laughs> I will qualify. I will qualify for AR whenever it's <laughs> Carly Marie, how's it going? Star Seeker, Nubia, and 404 Nemo is in the building. And T Jones, I'm a descendant. Yeah. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Okay, I think our next goal was what? Uh 400, I think. I can't, I can't remember. I should have, uh, <laughs> Nubia says no. <laughs> What's up, Dee Dee and Nicey Lee? Uh, Nisi, uh, Nisi Lee, I, you know I can't read. 
Okay, let, let me pull it up then. Let me let me go in and get it. And only gonna take a quick second because it's it's in my archive. <laughs> okay, so video file. We're gonna go into this folder right here. And all I gotta do is type in Harriet. Did I spell it wrong? Hold on. No, it's not even coming up. <laughs> it's not even coming up, y'all. I have it in my notes, so I'll, I'll get it from there. Yeah, y'all give me one second. I might have to do a screen share instead of uh, playing it directly from, um, what am I doing? I'm doing up the wrong thing. Oh, here it is right here. Yeah. All right, so one time he said that he was a descendant of um, Ramses. Okay, here it is. This is from 2014. Yeah, I'll have to do a screen share if y'all don't mind. Let me go ahead and pull this up right here. <laughs> Watch this. And then then and then listen to the response. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. And listen to how the, the guy uh, reacts to it after. All right, here we go. Let me let me do a screen share. Here we go, and I'll share the audio. Let me know if y'all can hear the audio. All right, here it is. Thanks for your patience. Right now. Peace and love, Black families. The Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson. It is the 4th of July, 2014. We're at the historic Fort Hill Cemetery, Auburn, New York. Paying respect to the Queen of Queens, none other than Araminta Ross, a.k.a. Queen Mother Harriet Tubman, a.k.a. Leader of the Underground Railroad, a.k.a. Builder of the Old Folks Home for African Elders, a.k.a. A nurse in the Civil War, a.k.a. A spy in the Civil War, a.k.a. A scout in the Civil War. And so we paid respects earlier to the Honorable Frederick Douglass, my direct ancestor, and it's only fitting and it's only with respect that if we're going to big up the masculine energy, we got to big up the feminine energy. And we know that Queen Mother Harriet and Frederick Douglass were very, very good friends. Some even say may have been cousins, which means I'm related to Harriet Tubman. I ain't going to even get into that right now. Okay. <laughs> 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 AKA, no. Can you believe this guy? He look, look he, it's amazing. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no. I, I, I don't have no idea. That you, baby, baby. Somebody just came in. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me play that one more time, and then we get to the video for today. Here you go. The Umar Johnson. It is the fourth of July, 2014. We're at the historic Fort Hill Cemetery, Auburn, New York. Paying respect to the Queen of Queens, none other than Araminta Ross, aka Queen Mother Harriet Tubman, aka Leader of the Underground Railroad, aka. Builder of the old folks home for African elders, a.k.a. a nurse in the Civil War, a.k.a. a spy in the Civil War, a.k.a. a scout in the Civil War. And so we paid respects earlier to the Honorable Frederick Douglass, my direct ancestor. And it's only fitting and it's only with respect that if we're going to big up the masculine energy, we got to big up the feminine energy. And we know that Queen Mother Harriet and Frederick Douglass were very, very good friends. Some even say may have been cousins, which means I'm related to Harriet Tubman. I ain't going to even get into that right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you be, can you, oh, Lord, there, uh, there's Umar claiming to relate to Harriet Tubman and Frederick. Like, why, why can't you get, know, what's up, Black Anonymous? It's wild. It, 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 it is so wild. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's get into the video for today. Let me pull up the first one, and I have them in order. There's the first one right here. Again, thanks everyone for tuning on in. I appreciate it. That was another super chat. Let me get this one real quick. Says Umar's way to all answers. <laughs> no, well, that, according to him, it seemed like that's how he feels like he's related to everybody. But I've talked about this in the past. It's more about uh, Umar wanting to feel important. And for whatever reason, having 16 degrees is not enough. He has to be related to Frederick Douglass. He, but in all fairness, Frederick Douglass, that was a lie that was told to him by his father. 
his father ended up correcting the law. He did it publicly. Uh, the Frederick Douglass family, they put out a statement, too. They did they did it twice. Uh, but in but uh, Umar still continues to run with the lie. Um, it, but this whole the whole Harriet Tubman thing, that, that's way out there. Like it's just way out there. And then he's also said he's he's a descendant of of uh, Pharaoh Ramses. You know, he's he said some other crazy stuff too. Uh, but but it's to make himself feel uh, important. It, I just I, I just something I just don't get. I don't I don't get it. It's that all that self aggrandizing. It's it's so unnecessary. Okay, you have some humility and also have some respect for other people's family members and their ancestors. Have some respect. He has no respect whatsoever. Okay, thanks uh, for the super chat, uh, Leona uh, Whitney. Okay, so this here's the first video right here, and this was from like maybe eight days ago. I should have the exact day. I apologize. I think it's, it's from about uh, nine days ago, maybe 10 days ago. Here we go. Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Wow, look at the difference. This is from, you know, not a couple of days ago. This is, what, 2014? What? No, two, yeah, 2014. Oh, I'm sorry. The show's not over yet. Uh, this one right here. Look at the difference. Wow. Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. It's your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. Ogun Tade, you see where we at. We got a school to finish up, family. It's FDMG all day, every day. I said it's FDMG all day, every day. I said it's FDMG. Uh, Umar said he was related to all great. No, I don't. I don't remember seeing that one. Uh, did we cover that one? If we covered it, I do have it somewhere. Yeah, I, I have it somewhere. Uh, Sean says we can. What's up, Sean? Says we can put together a whole compilation of times Umar has claimed to be related to someone. Frederick Douglass, Harris Tubman, uh, uh, Tubman, Ramses, Ramses, Ramos, as he says, and I think he said uh, he shared a birthday with Jesus. He did. He says. He said uh, Jesus was born on his birthday. He said, you was born on my birthday. <laughs> what? Said, you got to be kidding me. Stop the, stop the, it just caps. That's what they call the cap. All, right, all day, go. every day, family. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hit the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG school. It's your so he's still asking money for this. Someone sent me a, a video of uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, but he, he he was talking about how ooh, I could pull it up. But don't make me do it. You guys know who I'm talking about. If if I did, you guys know who he is right away. He, he's been controversial because he made some controversies. I, I think he's a comedian. Uh, but he was saying that Umar's been be that Umar's not on his level and that Umar's been begging for the. <laughs> <laughs> what's up honey pot i ain't seen you in a minute how you been goodness gracious thanks for being here what's up uh the bionic scoop anybody know the guy i'm talking about i could pull it up <laughs> let me pull it up just for the kick the the laughs I, well you know what i, I think i i think I, I have it somewhere I, I can't remember what i did with it uh what's the guy's name no not gerald levert <laughs> <laughs> not obviously the uh the, he he's a smaller guy he he had inter interviewed this one uh lady uh and she started get out got up on him was twerking or something like that or something he was on it was uh, um hold on let, let me let me where do i have it at yeah here it is right here i'm sorry you guys don't know who this is. I mean, most of you guys would know. I thought I, I thought I saved it. No, I didn't save it. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. No, not Cat Williams. <laughs> yeah, yes, Carlson Wright. That was White. Is that his name? All right, let me, let me pull this up real quick. Here it is right here. <laughs> I might have to skip. This is a longer, longer version. All right, check this out. In the projects and the hearts of American black youth. And I feel like if I can touch the lives and the hearts of American black youth, then our older people and our elders can leave Earth feeling better. 
I others can enjoy. Now, I don't beg either. One thing I don't do, I don't come ask my people for no money. I don't come to the people to say, y'all, can y'all give me some money to help y'all? What? Nah, I, you don't never hear me say, hey, y'all hit my cash out. I never ask my people to send me no money cash out. I never post my cash out. Never. I never post my cash out. I never jump online and say, hey, y'all, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I never do that. <laughs> I never do that because it ain't about that. You can't find one video where Charles and White say, hey, y'all hit the like button. Hey, y'all hit the subscribe button. I hey, do say hit the hit like button. button. Hey, make sure y'all hit that cash out. If I don't do the cash out, but I don't do the share. But I ask, I ask y'all if y'all hit the like button. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, y'all can subscribe, too. Why not? Video for me saying that. Because the old nigga, give me the game. The old nigga say the man in the land, the strongest, is the man who wake up and don't ask nobody for nothing. The man who wake up every day and ain't got to ask nobody for nothing, he know how to feed himself, get him some goddamn money. That's the strongest nigga out here. So I didn't come online big. I ain't like you. <laughs> He's been gay, though. No. I've, I've been there. I've been there. I'm glad I'm not in these days. I've been for over five years. It's been uh, half a decade. Let me get to the part, though. Hold on. Yeah, with that big and shit. So I don't do no big. Yep. So, so I got, I got, I got two big events today. And then I'm having, I got five kids. Uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, oh, spirit boy, five little girls ain't got no mama. Uh, uh, every water park we got, they kick and run him, tell him just, yeah, just change his method. Come on back, nigga. Don't now, come on back. Them three men that kicked his ass. From population, I don't know what you chose to go, to, and he called him from jail, and his woman said, "Say, uh, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Hold on." Uh, the, let this be a lesson. They just knew somebody was gonna come out. Let this be big. Hey, we selling fish plate. We trying to raise money. To get fish Junior plate. Get Junior the ground. <laughs> 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 Junior thug? Yeah, Junior was a thug of, 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 of the Balenciaga, the Balenciaga shoes. He got four pair of Gucci shoes. He got seven pair of Kanye Yeezy slippers. And see, boy, he got a big old chain. But we just try to, we gonna keep his chain for his baby. When his baby go fry, we got fried tilapia, y'all. This ain't catch. The Chinese people, he, he got killed three weeks ago. Mission died. God damn it, Jane Brown stuck in that damn neighborhood. Try to sit you around. You ain't, <coughs> they ain't lying. Shit. <laughs> you got yeah, yeah. You just can't leave her. I'm sorry, this ain't even the right one. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's funny, though. Uh, I don't know not much about him, but he's he's funny. Uh, let me see if I so let me do this. I'm, let me let's go with this video. Now I'm gonna see if I can find it. Here we go. The King Kong Consciousness, Doctor Umar Ifatunde, live and direct at your school, my school, our school. We getting ready, brothers and sisters. We getting ready. Oh yes, we save the babies and we build the institutions. We don't only save the babies, we build the institutions for the babies. Hit the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal. PayPal.me slash oh, FDMG right Academy. Here. Hit the PayPal. PayPal.me. Yeah, here we go right here. Let me let me just play it real quick. Then we then we get going for tonight. Yeah, I should have known because he's in his car in this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, see, this is why the Kwamis and all, they can't talk on my level. See, when I come Oh, he's talking YouTube, about Kwame. I, I think Kwame Brown. I dumb down on YouTube. Because the guys on YouTube ain't on my level. Uh, Dr. Umar Johnson was supposed to be on the, on the Danza Project. I wonder what that is. Anybody they know what the Danza level. Project is? They, they, they ain't on my level. See, think about this. As many strip clubs that I go to, I Volume is low. strip club. You can't find one woman to say nothing bad about me. All the strip clubs that I'm in, you don't find no videos, you don't find no girls coming out saying, and they gonna blast you like they blast Umar. Like they blast Oh, you. he's talking about the conscious stripper. That's what he's talking about. 
Yeah, I didn't catch that the first time I saw this. I was on my phone. <laughs> Hold on. Is that you, baby? All right. Yeah, I'll take this off. You can come on in. I said, I'll just take the video Kid, down. There are no women blasting me. Think about that, y'all. And I live in the clubs. I'm you say you live in the clubs. Think about what I'm saying. I live in a strip club, and it ain't no strippers, no hoes. Oh, girl, yeah, he woo, woo, woo. It ain't no chatter, no nothing on me. Come on, man. So let's be violent. You can't out talk Dr. Umar. I'll run circles around Umar. Because Umar is a beggar. He's been begging for a school. I've been spending my own money for 12 years, not begging for nothing. I'm going to say it again. Omar is a beggar. Hey, y'all, can y'all give me money to help out my school? Omar is being caught with prostitutes and white strippers. I don't know. I ain't never heard of none of that. Uh, now, he has been caught with a black stripper. We know that. But uh, all this other stuff. He ain't being caught with nothing, nigga. I run circles around that nigga. He knew it. He was supposed to be, me and him was supposed to be on the Danza project. He, was he said, da the he Danza said the Danza, Dandra or Danza? He was scared and they pay good. Hmm. And they pay good. And they pay good. Let me show you something. And they pay good. Let me show you about y'all hero. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just someone said that to me the other day. I don't, I don't know much about um, uh, Charleston White, but I, I think he's a comedian. Um, Lewis Suck says, uh, Umar dresses like a 90s rapper for a prince. <laughs> I can see him walking to FDG with a dashiki and a do-rag. Listen, there's videos of him in a dashiki with a do-rag on. Did y'all know that? In fact, one of the videos where he don't wash his hands, he's he has a do rag on and he has on a dashiki. You have a dashiki in that one? I mean, he does have on a do rag at least. I can't remember he had on a do rag, but there's videos where he has on a do rag and a dashiki. I've seen it. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get back to it here. Uh, here's the video. So we we got to get going. We already uh, we got 100 people. Thank y'all so much. And we already have 40 minutes. So let's let's get going. We got four videos to cover, but they're relatively brief. Here we go. Flash FDMG Academy. <laughs> We getting ready for the grand opening, brothers and sisters. We getting ready for the grand opening. Ifa Tunde Avenue, Dr. Papa Boulevard, What's up, Prince Honey of Pan-Africanism Parkway, Leo. The bill, the bill. Whoa, they go to sun, baby. Back in the day, that was a, a big time matchup. Back when uh, the Broncos had John Elway, the Bills had, uh, well, I can't remember his name right now. I used to like that team. They had him. They got Bruce Smith on the defense. They had uh, Thurman Thomas as a running back. They had, a, I can't remember the wide receiver. The Broncos had uh, great wide receivers, too. Uh, that, that was back in the day. Yeah, that's how old I am. They go to sun, melanin drip. Yeah, 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 Jim uh -oh, Kelly. melanin of, yeah. drip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim Kelly was one of my favorite quarterbacks back then. Yep, Jim Kelly, yep. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm tripping. Here we go. I need some more than melanin drip, though. I do the sun. And Thursday. Look at the background. Look at the HBCU, how these two, yeah, yeah, Delaware Andre State. Reed. I will yeah, see you Wednesday beast. and Thursday. Yeah, yeah, Shannon Sharp, Shannon Sharp, yeah, yeah, he, he was on that team. Yeah, Th those were the golden golden ages for those teams back in the day. But look at the condition of these buildings. He's saying that the renovations are done. HBCU Delaware State, I will see you Wednesday and Thursday for the Black Farmers Conference. The Black Farmers Conference. Anybody want to go to the Black Farmers Conference, text me for the registration. <laughs> Anybody yeah, want to go to the yeah. Black Farmers no, Conference at though. HBCU Delaware State next Wednesday and Thursday? Yeah, but the thing is, this is a, a play on words. This is what I mean by just cy a cyber criminal. He He's saying grand opening, but he's not saying that the school is going to open. He's just saying like an event to show the building and show that it's, it's complete. That's kind of like what he's alluding to. So that when you say that the school is going to be a grand opening, that, that, that means a school is opening. It's a grand opening. Now, you can have a soft opening, too. But a grand opening is that that's the deal. That's like it's this. Everything's done. We're ready. To, we're we got uh, uh, people ready to go. Children are enrolled and we're ready. We're going to we're going to start like today. That's not what that's not even what he's talking about. He gives that. He says that. But it's a play on words. And Umar Johnson follows. You guys got to think about that critically. And the, the irony is, uh, patron gold, is that he's been saying this for many years. Grand opening. The grand opening initially was supposed to take place in 2013. I can pull up the receipt right now. And then it takes him a decade. It takes him all the way to from 2010. 
and really 2009 all the way to 2000 uh, all the way to 2019 takes them 10 years to acquire these these buildings up there and now here we are almost five years later and there's still no grand opening but he he he's been saying that there's going to be a grand opening since february of 2019 he said that it was going to take place in uh 2020 and then he said 2021 and he said 2022 then he said 2023 and now he's saying I guess now he's saying uh, 2024. Uh, he, what does he call it? February, the Black History Month. Month. He also said it was going. It was going to open on August of this month of this year. He also says going to open in December of this year. He's been doing this for so long. It's ridiculous. Okay. Text me for the link two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. Yeah, it's more than twelve. More of them. I need some more of the melanin trip, that. though. I do the sun. Woo! Look at the look at these buildings. Look at these. Look at that. Renovations are done, and this is just the outside. He hasn't even shown the inside of that side uh, of the, the street. He hasn't shown the inside of it in in years. He hasn't even been over there. No renovations have taken place. Over so I here. do the sun. Woo! Look at the skin. Look at the melanin, baby. Look at woo hoo hoo. Look at the melanin. Where the Scorpios at? I got a Scorpio rising. Where the Scorpios at? I got a Scorpio rising. Where the Scorpios at? I got a Scorpio yeah. rising. I've been waiting for this to open since my daughter turned three. She's now 13. Yeah, that's about right. 10 years. Yeah. All together is 13 years. Delaware State Wednesday and Thursday. Baltimore, Maryland next Friday. Where my Baltimore, yeah, Maryland I Africans at? Where my Baltimore, about? Maryland Africans at? <laughs> Are you talking about me? <laughs> and I got my glasses on. Why are you clowning me like that? <laughs> I had to get my glass. I was talking about I was talking to my wife this morning. I said, I said, I gotta get my subscription my subscription uh prescription update the update. <laughs> I said, I gotta get my prescription. He says, I do too. <laughs> Let's talk about that this morning. Yeah. Uh, Kiara says, uh, Charleston Wright was not a comedian. He's a clown. Well, I, I don't, I thought he was a comedian. That's what I thought. I, I have, uh, uh, someone sent it to me. He's funny though. The, the way he'd be talking, he had me cracking up. Uh, thanks Kiara. Okay. Uh, let's get back to it. Here we go. I keep stopping. We're already 42 minutes in now. Each Sunday. I need a beach team. Who going to the beach? Oh, this is the wrong one. Here we go. Where my Baltimore, Maryland Africans at? I'm going to see you Friday, November the 10th. At the Open Eye Bookstore, Baltimore, Maryland. Open Eye Bookstore, Baltimore, Maryland. Open Eye Bookstore, Baltimore, Maryland. Friday night, five to eight. Three. Where my Virginia Africans at? I want to see you at Nat Turner Land, Saturday, November the eleventh. Who coming in Nat Turner Land? To uh, Dominique says, I think that what he means is there are Grand Canyon side. <laughs> Now it all makes sense. That's what he and I, that's actually factual. <laughs> no, for, seriously though, when he says the grand opening, it's amb it's there's ambiguity there. It's ambiguous. You know, he he said grand opening first. He said for the whole school, meaning both sides of the street. Then he said grand opening for the gym. Then he said grand opening for the small school. Then he says grand opening for the small school and the gym. But really, when he says grand opening these days, it, it's not that 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 he has faculty and staff. Everything is renovated. Everything passed inspection. Uh, they have a, a board a, a, a board of directors. Everything, everything, and they have students enrolled. That's not what he's talking about as a grand opening. He's just talking about kicking it. You know, come on up here and come kick it with me, and I'm gonna show you the building. That's really what he's talking about. The the closest thing that he has had uh, Dominique to a grand opening was the block parties, parties in the middle of the street, and that's a shame. Because now we're almost five years into this, and that's the closest thing that he's he's. If you think about it, out of all these years, almost five years, and let me, let me you know give give him uh, you know uh, it's four years and nine months, four years and let's say four years and eight months, in four years and eight months, the only thing that Umar Johnson has done up there is thrown two parties. And he still asks for money. He still collects, like Charleston White was saying, he's still collecting money for a school that does not exist. Yeah. Thanks for Super Chat. Thanks for Super Chat, uh, Dominique. Also, Kiara, thank you, Louis Luck, the uh, little gaming channel, uh, and Leona uh, Witness, uh, or uh, Whitney, I'm sorry, Whitney. Thank you so much. 
Okay, here we go. I'm gonna let it play now. To celebrate the greatest revolutionary to ever walk on American soil, who's coming to Nat Turner land? Make sure you register at natturnerlibrary.com. Make sure you yeah, register at natturnerlibrary.com. <laughs> Make sure. I didn't see that part. It's still boarded up for the 2020 riots. <laughs> Umar, he's keeping it boarded up for the 2050 riots, okay? Just in case. That's what he's doing. Thank you, BGL. Sal says, man, there are all types of species in the black mold growing on those walls. <laughs> What's up, <laughs> What's up, Sal? Yeah, th that mold situation is, is horrendous up there, and he, he doesn't even care. He, he says that renovations are done. Right. But you look at just just the fact that these the buildings are still boarded up uh, after four years and what, eight months. That's telling in and of itself, you know. But I, but I, I said this a long time ago that if, if Umar takes the boards off, th those buildings are not secure and it's in a crime uh, infested, drug infested neighborhood. It's hood hood. And, I, and, I, and what I told people a long time ago was that they're going to be breaking those windows out and they're going to be gaining entry. And then then the people in that area, the homeless people, drug, drug addicts, they're going to do just like they were doing before, before he purchased the properties. They're going to be living up in there. He knows that. He knows that. And then he took some some of the boards down. And everyone got all excited. Yeah, you know, quick rush chat. Now you're defeated, you know. And then, you know, put them right back up because someone broke a window. I, I, I told you that that's exactly what's going to happen. It ain't got nothing to do with hate. It just has to do with that area. Listen, if we want open, if, if he took the, see, the, the buildings were abandoned before he purchased them and they're abandoned today. When they were abandoned before he purchased them, they were boarded up, but there were people breaking in anyway and was living up in there. I remember one time there was a video, I kid you not, that he was walking through there when there was no electricity. He walked past and there was like this couch and the couch had like a sleeping bag and a pillow or something like that or blankets, or whatever it was. And then there were cans of food sitting uh, on this little small table right next to it. And I said, what? And that's exactly what would, would take place if he took the boards off those windows. Over because he, there's no security up there. It's These are abandoned buildings. Now, if this was a functional school, that wouldn't happen because there would be security in place. Okay? People wouldn't be breaking. I mean, it happens. People will break into a school, but not to break in to live in the school because they know that the next day or the next week or whatever, there's going to be people who are going to be up there at the school, including security guards. Right. But there is none of that. These are not schools. These are simply abandoned buildings. I'm trying to tell you, Mark Johnson follows. That's all that is. What's up, Mr. Monica? Uh, thanks, Al, for the super chat. Uh, I think there was one other one that came in. Uh, Kiara says, remember the FMG pillows hit the one. When on it, maybe he'll give away pillows at the grand opening. Yeah, there was a time, and I can pull it up, where Umar was selling FDMG pillows. You can look it up. You can Google it. He was selling FDMG pillows, and the pillows were so hideous and horrible. One of the pillows was spelled wrong. FDMG was spelled wrong. Let me see if I have it. No, I, I have it in my notes. We're getting sidetracked. Yeah, but I, I remember I remember that. Uh, thanks for Super Jack, Kiara. Yeah, yeah, he was selling. He can, you guys go on, go and Google it real quick. It'll, it'll come up. Thanks for Super Jack. Okay, let's get back to it. Here we go. FMG pillows. And one of them was spelled FMG. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm going to go get it. Okay, I'm going to go pull it up. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Here, here. And I'll, I'll put this back on. You register at natturnerlibrary.com. Chicago Africans, I'll be up there for a podcast interview on Tuesday the 14th Chicago Africans. I'll be up there for a podcast interview on Tuesday, the 14th. Are there any meetings going on in Chicago Tuesday night, November the 14th? Are there any meetings going on in Chicago Tuesday night, November the 14th? I want to learn about the migrant crisis. Are there any meetings in Chicago Tuesday night, November the 14th to talk about the migrant crisis? I want to learn about the migrant crisis, brothers and sisters. Chicago, Tuesday night, the migrant crisis. Memphis, Tennessee, Black Parent Boot Camp, Saturday, November the 25th. Memphis, Tennessee, Black Parent Boot Camp. Everybody from Tennessee needs to be at the Black Parent Boot Camp on Saturday, November the 25th. Everybody in the state of Tennessee Need to be at the Black Parent Boot Camp. Yeah, everything's always a, a command. You need to be. You're going to be. You have to be. Okay, watch this.
this was like uh, Dr. U, uh, Dr. Umar Sanford and son, FDMG, FMDG. He posted this. Get your FMG pillow today. This was from <laughs> September 24, 2017. <laughs> he didn't even purchase the banded boots until 2019. How you going to sell, sell pillows to a school that don't exist? I got this video right here. This video right here. Oh, this is on Black Anonymous. Uh, she, uh, they they posted this on here, but this this particular video, I have it. I should pull that up. And he keeps showing it on the screen, and then he leans up on it. <laughs> it's just it's just a mess. Here we go. Let's get back to this it. Tennessee, Saturday, November the twenty fifth. Norwood, Massachusetts. Where my Boston Africans at? Where my Boston Africans at? Norwood, Massachusetts, Friday, November the 30th. Where my Boston... The return of the FDMG pillows this spring. <laughs> Restoration fund donations. Oh my goodness. Just, they just don't stop. Norwood, Massachusetts, Friday, November the 30th. Norwood, Massachusetts, Friday, November the 30th. Norwood, Massachusetts, Friday, excuse me, <laughs> Thursday, God. November the 30th. Thursday, November the 30th. I don't know what Thursday, he was talking November about. Thursday, November the 30th. Thank Norwood, Massachusetts, Thursday, November the 30th. Omaha, Nebraska. Where my Nebraska Africans at? Where my Nebraska Africans at? I'm going to see y'all December the 2nd in Omaha. I'm going to see y'all December the 2nd in Omaha. I'm going to see y'all December 2nd in Omaha. I'm going to see y'all December 2nd. In Omaha, where my Kansas City yeah, Africans. That's okay. That's okay, Kelly. There's, and, and Kelly and Derek. There's a lot of people who were uh, big fans of, of Umar. Uh, a lot of people in the chat room were, you know. But just to give an example, because I remember there were people who they were like, I can't believe I fell for. It. I said, Don't feel bad about it. This happens all the time. You know, it's cybercrime, and people fall for this all the time. You know, um, everyone inside the cook, anyone in cook rich chat, if you used to follow Umar Johnson, you was a supporter. Doesn't necessarily mean you sent him money, but you believed that he was legit or whatever. Hit the one. It, it's not. It's there's not. There's nothing special about that. There's plenty of people uh, who at, at one time uh, believed in Umar and believed that he was legit. I never did. Uh, I remember the first time someone sent me something on him was when he posted uh, the St. Paul's fundraiser. And I was watching and I said, no, this don't make no sense. That it's just him. How's he gonna pull all this off? He want he wants to raise two one million, then he said two million dollars in in a matter of months for uh, but there's no plan, there's no board of directors, there's no building. So you're gonna you're gonna purchase this building without a board of directors, without a curriculum, and, and somehow you're gonna raise uh, a million, two million dollars in a couple of months, and then you're gonna somehow renovate this and then have it open in a, a reasonable amount of time you don't even have the money to purchase the, the properties in the first place it made no sense to me uh, and then the types of things he, he was saying that they were that they were going to be doing at this i said no this it's only you what are you talking about so i knew right away that it, it was it was a it was a con i didn't believe that it was going to be a long con but it ended up being a long con here we are now 13 years all together uh, this has been going on and there are a lot of people who uh, believe in umar and because of the school scam they they stop and and there's other things too like uh, the school scam the rent the SETI rant the conscious stripper thing someone was asking what that's about you can look that up look up conscious stripper Umar Johnson text messages will come up he admitted that those are his texts and all that stuff uh, but hey, listen there's a lot of people that used to believe in Umar you know, I'm just glad that more and more people are waking up it, what what saddens me is that platforms like the Bre Breakfast Club they had him on over and over again so it exposes a, a large amount of people to this guy. A lot of those people are young and impressionable. And, and, and I would propose that, that a lot of the younger people, they don't have the history. They don't know the history. They don't know Umar's history. Going all the way back to UNIA days. I have all that and we've talked about all of that. Okay, th there were problems even way back then. You know, problems when he was in the black conscious community dealing with, uh, what was, uh, Saw Netter and them. There was problems back then. You know, the problems going back to the days with uh, Tariq Nasheed with uh, Hidden Colors and everything that took place with that and the fallout because of that. Now, those are all, you know, red flags and, and like sirens that if, if people really put the pieces together, you realize that this guy, he, he's uh, he's a charlatan. You know, he, he really is. He, he's a scammer. He's a fraudster. And he uh, he's a cyber criminal, because if you're doing this all over on, online and you're taking all this money from people and the money's not going towards what he said it was going to go towards. 
It's one thing if you, you know, you ask for money, you say it's going to go for towards this. OK, I get it. But if you ask for, for money and you don't raise all this money, close to three million dollars by now and there's still no operating school, that's a problem. Meanwhile, he still continues to push back the, the grand opening over and over and over again. And he's been doing this since 2010. Excuse me. He's been doing this since 2013. Pushing the date back, pushing the date back. Oh, we're going to get a building in 2004. We're going to be building in 2015. The school will open in 2016. The school going to open in 2015, 16, 17, 18. Then he gets a building in 2019. The school going to open in 2020. Well, here we are uh, going, uh, getting towards the end of 2023, about to go into 2024. And, and look at the condition of these buildings. Look. I mean, look, look at how, look, look, and, and look, here's plenty of people in here who used to, you know, believe that Umar was legit, you know, and it's better to, to get out of that. than I feel bad for the people who still believe in, in, uh, in Umar. Uh, it's sad. Yeah. He's still accept. What's up, Barnkey? Yeah. He's still accepting resumes. He, he's talked about people sending him uh, resumes recently. You know, I remember one time he said, I had, I've gotten over 600 resumes, resumes for how's it going here? Resumes for what? There's no what's up? What uh yeah, all, all, I haven't seen y'all so in so long. Hope you're doing all right. Uh resumes for what? In the very beginning, yeah. I did, but I had a friend that did and still does. <laughs> oh, poor thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian says, nah. <laughs> so what's up, Brian? <laughs> hey, good to see y'all. Some of y'all ain't seen it in a long time. All right, let's get back to it. Here we go. We're my Kansas City, Kansas Africans. <laughs> We're my Kansas yeah. City, Kansas <laughs> Africans. I'm going to see you Sunday, December 3rd. Kansas City, Kansas Africans. I'm going to see you Sunday, December 3rd. Kansas City, Kansas Africans. I'm going to see you Sunday, <laughs> December 3rd. Baltimore <laughs> is free. Norwood is free. What's up, Fuji? Kansas up, City is free. What's up, my Pull up Queens? season. If you need to fly or text my phone, 215 989 9858. If you need to fly or text my phone, 215 989 9858. If you need to fly or text my phone, mm -hmm. this ain't my school. This is your school. No, it ain't my school. This school uh -huh. belongs to the American African. Nope. This school belongs to the continental nope. African. This nope. school belongs to the Canadian African. Uh-uh. Don't say that. It, only, it ain't my school. <laughs> is there anybody in this chat room? Is it your school? Hit the one. <laughs> ain't nobody claiming these, these bandos up there. Ain't not one person trying to claim these bandos. <laughs> Yeah, submitting this is a good point, Bradley. Submitting a resume while still uh, having to donate to work there and not knowing your salary is beyond insane. Teachers are not working for free and they already complain about being underpaid. Yeah, this is a good point. Why send in a resume to a company or a business or, or a job that does not exist? That's just Umar. That's the long con. He wants to give the illusion that oh, we're almost there. He might as well start sending the resumes in now. No, that's just part of the, the scam. Because listen, give me your information. Give me as much details as you can. See, in Umar's mind, if someone has, let's say, uh, a bachelor's degree and they send in the resume, then he says, OK, they're going to have bachelor's degree income. If they have an associate's degree, Umar, in his mind, as a criminal minded person, he's going to say, well, this person has uh, uh, an associate de degree level income. If the person doesn't has just a, I shouldn't say it that way, but if they have a high school diploma, he's going to say, well, they're probably going to have a high school diploma type level of income. If they have a master's, a master's level a degree uh, level income, they have a Ph.D., a Ph.D. level income. OK. And then, of course, depending on what the field is going to be more or less, et cetera. But then the other thing is that if someone sends it and says, listen, I have my own business and this is what my business is, and, and you know, uh, we're successful, blah, 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 well, based upon that business, he, the, Omar's going to say, well, this is another mark. That is probably lucrative because of the industry that that business is operating in. So in his mind, he's, he figures, okay, the people who have would have the most resources, these are the people that I'm going to be communicating with. And even if it's just a send matter, listen, I got your resume. Uh, listen, I, make sure you donate because we're about to open. We want to make sure these jobs are available. Uh, you know, you're, you're at the top of the list. You're at the top, that, that type of thing. That's Umar. Okay. But the, the level of insanity for someone to send a resume in in the first place, it, well, I shouldn't even say insanity. It's delusional. You're sending in a resume to a place that a bit, there, there, there's no school. 
There are no jobs. There's no students. What's the point of sending a resume to a school if there's no school, no students? There's no board director, directors. There's no curriculum. Look, look at the, look at how these buildings even look. Why would you send? And here we are now, 13 years into this, almost five years since he purchased these uh, trap banners with other people's money. Why would you send a resume in to, to this? And who in their right mind would want to work for Umar in the first place? And why would you want to work in these trap bandos in a drug infested, crime infested neighborhood? Black people, we got to set a higher standard anyway. Some people are cool with that. It's unacceptable. If you're going to, if you're going to collect millions of, of dollars from black people, cyber crime, for a school that does not exist, that's cyber crime. It's a scam. It's a, it's a, it's fraud. Use the internet to do it. Well, it's cyber crime. If you do, if you're going to do that, then why not purchase a, a, a storefront? in a nice neighborhood and then teach the children out of there why not just set up a, an online make it e-commerce ready an online school i, I already talked about this with the infrastructure put in place uh umar he, he, i guess he, he can there are people willing to, to do it for him for free too uh uh marion uh brother marion rest in peace was one of the people uh Get the, the infrastructure in place, get the website set up, get the content up. All that could be can, can get done in less than a year with the amount of money that Umar and, and if he had done it right. And if he approached it, approach this with a level of professionalism and with business as e-commerce, not a brick and mortar, but virtual, he could have been raking in fifty thousand dollars a month. In his heyday, it could have been done easily. When I it, just when I'm on YouTube, and I know I've been gone, but when I'm on YouTube consistently, the amount of money that I make, there's it pale and it's 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 meaningful and I'm grateful. But it pales in comparison to what Umar could have done if he had approached this legitimately and not as a way simply to get money out of people and scam people this long con. That's what I'm saying. It backfires when you approach things that way, because he could have done this legitimately and he would have been raking in easily $50,000, easily, $50,000 uh, a month. And he could scale it over time, get to $100,000 a month. Now, and we've talked about this. All he has to do is get the infrastructure in place first with the servers and all this stuff. But the, the content, that's not going to take, it's, it's going to take time, but it's not going to take much work. Because he could have outsourced that to different people and paid them or they would have done it for free. Class, music classes, dance classes online. Uh, 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 writing compos uh, composition classes, he could have had uh, people who do construction. Okay, this is how you uh, do drywall, and they do a tutorial. Have that on that for that section, and in all these different sections for all these different. They have a chemist. They're going to do some chemistry assignments, and then if you, uh, it, it, it could have, it, he could have scaled this a hundred thousand dollars easily a month, easily. But he tricked it off because he wasn't genuine in the first place and it was nothing more than a long con. It always backfires like that. Information man, what's up, man? Says, I'm 54 years old today. Oh, happy birthday. U Umar been uh, doing this since I was much younger, man. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, he's been doing this since I was 12. <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, wish happy birthday to the brother information, man. Happy birthday, man. Yeah, my birthday's next week. Yeah, congratulations on everything, and thanks for being an inspiration to me to get my stuff turned around. I still got a long way to go, but uh, I've uh, made some progress. All right, congratulations and happy birthday. <laughs> everybody in the chat room, Cook Crush Chat, you know how we do. Let's let's give uh, some love to information, man, on his birthday. <laughs> All right, right on, man. Uh, LA says, put up a C uh, uh, if Umar tried to get. <laughs> Stop. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, we are. Oh, cool. We already have 400 likes. Okay, our goal is 600. So let me get the next one up here. <laughs> It'd be a gang of C's in there. <laughs> this is, this is blow up. The whole gang of C's in the chat room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and just to connect with that real quick the other thing because there was someone in the chat and they said they used to believe in umar that's another thing that there are a lot of people there they 
their disbelief began when they realized what Umar's intention was. It wasn't about opening up a school because it doesn't take a man who collects millions of dollars over 13 years to open up a school. I mean, he, again, he could just bought a storefront. He could have just went into a lease. I don't know, $2,000 a month, $3,000, let's say $4,000 a month. See, he had collected over $400,000 just on GoFundMe, just on GoFundMe alone, $400,000. He couldn't that and, and that's just on go fund. We're not talking about all the cash apps. We ain't talking about the PayPal's. We ain't talking about the checks, money, orders, cash. We're not talking about any of that. But let's just let's just look at the GoFundMe. I think that was over the course of three years, something like that. I can pull up the receipts and show you all. But but let's just say he took that four hundred thousand and he said, Okay, we're just gonna get a, a small storefront and we're gonna pay a lease. Uh, on, on the property, and we're going to do a lease. Uh, our budget for this, let's say four thousand dollars uh, a month. Okay, was that forty eight thousand dollars a year? He could have done that with four hundred thousand dollars. And then let's say over the just for for a year, what all the money that's left over, he could just focus on infrastructure, getting paying two teachers. Okay, pay himself, make sure that you can pay the electricity, insurance, and all this type of thing. He could have. He could have gotten close to being able to opening up just a small little storefront school with four hundred thousand dollars just to start okay he's not making a gang of money at that time and the teachers aren't making a that's okay okay uh make sure you have a security guard that type of thing too but the point is that that would show and prove it would be a proof of concept and but but if he does that with that four hundred thousand dollars again that's just the money that he raised on gofundme Okay, in 2017, he says we already got a million. Okay, I can pull it up and play it for you all. He said we already we already got a million. Then he said we're all at almost a million. Okay, let's go, let's say almost. Okay, we would have to say it's got to be what nine hundred thousand dollars. What could he have done with nine hundred thousand dollars? Could he have at least done that? And that would have been a proof of concept. And then the money would have started pouring in because people say, oh wow, he's really doing this. The point I want to get to is that a real man is not going to take four hundred thousand dollars or nine hundred thousand or a million or two million or three million at this point it's got to be close to three million dollars and not have something to show for it after 13 years so a lot of people started to wake up because after 13 years the question what is his intent here comes up and the intent is not to open up a school because it doesn't take 13 years to open up a school especially with the type of money he was bringing in and that he has brought in up to this point so what is the true intent? And I've already explained this. I explained this to people a long time ago. The intent is, number one, to get money. The money is to live out his lifestyle. We've talked about that, too, in the past. I want to get into that all that right now. I'll just tell you that the lifestyle is it's a non-functional and it's self-destructive. I'll just say that. The other thing is to gain access to women. And what I mean by that is a, a lot of the propaganda that he spewed early on was about, I'm going to save your black boy and you single mothers. Don't worry. Big, even, I can pull all this up. I can pull up the receipts where he was putting up memes, memes up there of little black boys. And then it would say under it, it would say, don't worry. Uh, or no, the, like the mother saying, don't worry, son. Big Papa is going to open up the school and he's going to save you. Some crazy stuff like that. I can pull up the receipts. He had posted these on, on his Instagram. What it shows you is that at, at that time, his target was black women, single black mothers. But it wasn't to, to save their boys. Ain't none of that happened. He's called for the murder of black boys. What was the intent? The intent was to gain access to black women so that he can uh, exploit them sexually. And he's been doing that for, for over a decade now. And that's why these days he can't even control himself. He'll start talking about cookies and hot fudge queens and pina colada queens. And this is his own words. Hot cookies, cookies being a euphemism for vagina. And he can't help himself. See, over time, what has happened with Umar is that Whatever level of self-control he had to keep all that in check, he doesn't, he lacks that these days because he doesn't have the level of self-control. And part of it has to do with the self-destructive lifestyle that he's he's, he's gotten more and more rambunctious and out of control. He, he can't control himself anymore. So a lot of people woke up to, to Umar because they started to notice that his message wasn't really about black boys. It was that was just the lure to draw in more black women, in particular single black mothers. So he can get money out of them, but then also the gain access. I should I should play this video for you all. I ain't gonna do it. You know it's bad when I start putting my pens and pen pencils be moving around. <laughs> 
talking about. We, gonna, we ain't going to get into that right now. All right. Uh, uh, South Carolina Diamond says, I would, uh, or Demond says, I would never give Umar money directly. However, I would pay or donate to see a full inspection report on built on both buildings, renovations complete. Yeah. But he hasn't shown any paperwork like that, too. That gets into the whole accountability. There's no accountability. He never showed a uh, purchase price for these properties. I had to find that out myself. I had to do my own research to, to get that figure, 400000 He's never said how much he paid. He never showed any documentation to prove that he purchased them. He never. He hasn't shown any uh, paperwork dealing with uh, contractors that have been out there. Uh, he hasn't shown anything. Nothing. He hasn't shown anything. He's I've even and there's been two times that I know of where the city came out to do uh, road work and Umar gets out there with his camera and records it as if they're doing renovations on FDMG. That's a charlatan. That's a fraudster. At least two times. We've covered that. And I remember I looked it up and, and, I, and I did it for members I, I, for one of the one of those times. And I, and I said, no, this is not that there's no renovations that, that have been done. Uh, this is the city. And then I, I even pulled up the paper uh, online. You can see the, the schedule where, where they were going to be. And it was right there on 16th Street or whatever it is, uh, right in front. And, and that's what he was showing, talking about uh, uh, they're doing renovations. Well, why are they doing renovations? They got uh, uh, tractors and, and tractor trailers in this time, whatever it was. You know, like I can't remember what it was. Right? That's not that's not for renovating buildings. That's for doing uh, uh, uh Pavement, you know, they were tearing up the pavement and putting in pipes and all that stuff. One time they were doing electricity, uh, wiring and stuff. Umar tried to act like they were there to, to do renovating the FDMG. So, yeah, uh, Umar, he doesn't provide any documentation. There's no um, there's no sense of, of progress other than what he shows, but there's never any proof. Just like he'll show these this building right here. But what does this prove? Does this prove that renovations are done? No. Where's the inspection report on both buildings? Okay. He says renovations are complete. Yeah, but where's the proof? Of this there is no proof. Why is there no proof? Because you can't prove a lie. This is one of the big lessons. And, and, and thanks, uh, SC Diamond for the super chat. Everybody else, thank you for the super chat. We got a new member too. Thank you, LEC. This is one of the big uh, lessons that I've learned since I started doing Umar Johnson videos. And I want everyone to hear me on this. Umar is a habitual liar. And because he's a habitual liar, he lies all the time. But the thing is that you can't prove a lie to be true. So it's better for him to just make statements that this is the renovations are done without showing and proving it. But how can he prove it when there is no proof? Because he's lying in the first place. Now, let's turn this around. There are so many people when I start doing these Umar uh, videos, all kinds of lies spinning things, turning things upside down, just coming up with all kinds of stuff. The top, and, and it's not just uh, online that I deal with. There's other stuff I just had never talked with people about. But I'm, And I'm not here to act like I'm some victim or, or woes me. Okay, That's not what I'm doing here. What I'm getting at is that people can lie all, all they want to. But the critical question is, where is the proof? Speculation is one thing, but where is the proof? See, there is no proof for a lie. But there is proof for the truth. And no matter how much a person tries to twist things up to make something appear to be the truth, it's still a lie. And so with Umar, no matter how he tries to make it appear as if renovations are done, the evidence is right there to prove that that's nothing more than a lie. And this is one of the big lessons that I've learned since I started doing uh, following Umar and really uh, looking into him and researching him deeply is that how he operates is, to, is in such a way to where a lie he presents as, as a truth, but does not have to provide for, mo for a lot of people. I shouldn't even say most, but for a lot of people, he doesn't have to provide proof to any given claim. He presents it and people just go along with it as if it's true, but it doesn't make it, that doesn't mean that it's true because a lie is going to be a lie on Monday. It's going to be a lie on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, love. It's going to be on this month, next month, the next month after that. It's going to be this year, next year. It's going to be for the next decade, for the next hundred years, for the next thousand years, for the next 50,000 years. A lie is going to be a lie. All right. All right, let's get back to it. Here we go. This school belongs to the Caribbean African. This school belongs to the South American African. This school belongs to the Central American African. This and thanks, Gary, for becoming a member. Uh, real quick, uh, 
Why does Umar, here's another thing. That's what I mean by I've studied Umar. Why does Umar say things like this? Why does he say this? First of all, he says this school, it's not a school. You guys, we can go look it up. We've already done it in the past. Look up a definition of a school. It's a place of learning. What He's standing out here at the kicker spot. It's not a place of learning. You don't see anyone teaching. You don't see anyone learning anything. It's just Umar out there free in the freezing cold. So in the first place, it's not a school. That's a lie. So, but he says, this school is yours. Then he say, you over there in Africa. You say, you over there in Canada. You say, you over there, and this is in Europe. This is your school. You over here in, in North America. You over here in South America. This month, the next month. You over there in Bra Brazil, as he says. You over there in Madagascar. You know how he does. On Pluto and in, 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 in <laughs> uh, Tarsetti and all this stuff. Why does he do that? But one, it spins the lie that there is a school, but also he wants to be inclusion. It's inclusionary. It's yours. And because it's yours, look at what we've accomplished. And if it, see, you're going to be more inclined to contribute to something that is yours than to something that is not yours. Does it make sense? See, you go, your neighbor, they got a household. That's not your household. You going to pay their rent? The other neighbor, too? The other neighbor, too? This is our rent. No, <laughs> no, I got my own rent. I got my own mortgage. I got my own lease. You gonna pay their lease? No, you gonna pay, you gonna pay. No, then you're not gonna do that. But see, if, if Umar spends this as if there's a school in the first place, and if he spends this at it spends this and, and includes you in it, you're gonna be more inclined to believe that there is a school, and you're gonna be more inclined to say, listen, I need to support this because it's mine. See the see the mind games? This guy, he's a trip. School belongs to the European Africans, the Asian European. Africans, Africans, uh, the Australian Africans, the South Pacific Africans. This school belongs yeah, to the race. Yeah, he, he, he could have started off small and, and he went crazy on Lord Jamar when the Lord Jamar told him that. We covered that. That was one of his big rants. That's the one where he was calling me like he said, I'll, I'll be messing with children. I said, OK, bro, talking that crazy mess. Uh, he says he may be an educator, but see, Bradley, he's not an educator. Umar's never taught in a classroom. Running your mouth online doesn't make you an educator. An educator, that's like a real career. <laughs> now, you can educate, but that don't make you an educator. <laughs> if this makes sense. An educator is someone who is in a facility like a school or, or a college or a community college or a university. They're an educator. It's it's a real field. It, it's a real. These are experts in that field. It's a real career path. <laughs> That's not the case. Umar. Umar ain't never taught nowhere, which is mind boggling to me. He gonna open up a school, but he ain't never taught children. But the other point is, uh, he's a horrible businessman. Well, the thing is that he he doesn't know business. But even if he did, it wouldn't matter because the goal is not to open up a business. It's not to open up a school that's a functional business. The goal is to get money. And it's that simple. See? He doesn't even have he doesn't even have a business plan. See, Bradley and Cookie Cross Jack, the operating budget for the Moyer Academy was six million dollars per year. And that was over a decade ago. Hello. What, with inflation, what will be the operating uh, uh, the expenses, the total expenses to operate, faculty and staff, everything furnished, all the insurance is in place, everything's passed inspection, everything, everything. And you're able to do and you're, you're able to pay for the whole year, faculty and staff, all of the bills associated, all of the overhead. How much y'all think it would be in 2023? Well, obviously 2024, because that's the next date he said. And of course, we say, oh, well, he's only going to open up half of the street. OK, well, let's just cut that in half to three million dollars back in the day. How much would it be? It's probably now six million dollars. Now, these days, well, where is he going to come, come up with the money for six, six million dollars a year? See, a businessman would think about that. Someone who has some level of business acumen with and they should think about that even before purchasing these trap bandos. Makes no sense. Why are you going to purchase some product for, for, for four hundred thousand dollars? But it's millions of dollars that need to re, be, go into it. And. You're saying that you only collect, you ain't even collecting a million dollars or we almost got a million dollars. That don't make no sense. If you can't, if Umar, well, let, let me let it go. It's, the point is that, that a person, anyone who has any kind of sense dealing with figures and money on that level would say, wait, this is not financially viable. Let's say that based on Umar, 
he said a million dollars in two, almost a million. Then he said a million, millions. Then he said almost a million. That's, that was in 2017. Here we are now, six years later. Is is it a stretch to say that he should have at least 1.5 million? I don't think it's a stretch. I don't even think it's a stretch to say he has two million dollars by now. Because 2017, that was just three years since he launched the, the uh, he's counting from 2014. You know, he was collecting money going all the way back to 2009. He don't even count all that money. He's saying from 2014 to 2017, or what, 2018, 2017, from, from 2014 to 2017, over the course of three years, he said he has already had a million. Well, now we're almost a decade later. So if he said he was almost at a million over three years, we can project and say, well, that means that we've got another three years and another three years where well, he should be somewhere around three million dollars. But let's let's cut that back. We're just going to say two point five million. Which is what I would that's the best estimate that I have. And it makes sense based on things that he has said and what he has said in terms of, of money that he's collected. Well, if, if you've only been able to collect two point five million dollars since 2014, even though you've been collecting since 2009, since 2014. And now here we are in 2023 going into 2024 over over a decade. You only been able to collect and I'm not minimizing the money. But if you're only able to collect two two point five million dollars, how are you going to pay for operating costs for just one year? 10 years of collecting money, but that's not even enough to pay for one year of operating costs. So why do you keep going with this? Well, because it's nothing more than a long con. That's what I've been trying to explain to people. If you look at this rationally, just, just based on the figures and the numbers, it's not financially viable. And that should be enough for anyone with common sense to say, wait a minute, this is not my project. This is not my school. I'm not going to be sending money to this. Why would I send money to this? And it just keeps dragging on and on and on. I remember when he purchased these properties for $400,000 with other people's money. People were jumping out the window like, wow, he did it. You haters could crush that. You guys, what are you going to say now? And here we are now almost five years later, and there's still no school. And there never will be. He already told people it's not going to be accredited. So even if you graduate from these so-called schools, it, you're, it's null and void. You're, you're, the, the diploma means absolutely nothing. He admitted that. He said that it was not going to be accredited. All right. Uh, thanks for Super Chat, uh, SC Diamond. And Gary, thanks for becoming a member. Reptilian African Zeta Reticuli. <laughs> Zeta Reticuli. I know all that stuff. Okay. The reptilians. <laughs> We ain't going to get to that. All right, let's go. Thank you, everyone, for a super chat. Here we go. This is an African racial institution, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Zeta Reticuli. Get your cash app. I'm not cutting my hair, my brother. Stop worrying about my hair. That, that's like, that, that was another one. It was, it, was the, the, it was like Aryan race or whatever was from some star system. <laughs> you guys remember that? Oh, my goodness. That was a conspiracy theory days. All right, here we go. He's talking about his hair. That is a very non-alpha male behavior right there why are you worrying about another man's hair we need some testosterone injections we don't need no <laughs> covid shot we need some testosterone shots why are you worrying about my damn hair why are you worrying about my hair my brother why are you worrying about my hair i'm a warrior i'm a mal mal warrior i'm an ethiopian warrior i'm a zulu warrior i'm a garvey warrior brother i'm not cutting my hair because when i make love when i make love your queen be grabbing my hair. Stop it, Papa. <laughs> what do we get ourselves into? What in the world? Uh, thanks for becoming a member, Miss Old School. How you doing, dear? <laughs> what is this guy talking about? Boy, he, boy, I, I don't know. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> let me let me get out of here right now. <laughs> I can't help but look. I can't help. I'm looking right now. I got I got to get up out this chair. <laughs> Boy, he he be wild, and sometimes he be saying stuff. I said, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> Hey, then the environment of FDMG reflects Umar's eyes. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. When he flipped the phone, it it, it mirrors his uh, his lifestyle. That was his environment. That was his lifestyle. Uh, and that, I, I would speculate that one of the reasons why Umar doesn't see it as being a problem for him to even be up there with the buildings looking like this is because he's used to living in those types of conditions in the first place. 
and it doesn't register as being it. it uh, he was living in hoarder like conditions, literally. OK, we, I, I think I played that a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was hoarder like condition. Anyone ever see that that show, the hoarder show? It's no different than that. You know, there was stuff stacked. I, I showed it. I ain't going to show it again. Not in this live stream, but stuck stuff just trash and junk st and uh, stacked up on top and just a little walkway through the middle of it. But it was stacked all the way up high. Well, that, that was his lifestyle then, and, and he's used to that. And that, that brings us to another point. Why would any parent want to send their child who obviously is struggling to, to Umar when he's struggling with those types of issues? It's a self-destructive lifestyle. Why would you want to send your child? And why would you send money to a person? See, money doesn't help Umar. It just enables him to continue to live out his self-destructive lifestyle. See? Now, thanks, Dion. And, and let me know, too, when you uh, when you take that test, bro. We're going to have to celebrate on that. I appreciate it. Okay, did I get to everybody? Yeah, okay, I, I got all the suggestions. And, uh, let's get back to the video. Here we go. She say, Big Pop, stop it, Papa. She say, stop it, Papa. Stop worrying about my hair. Why would she say stop it? Damn. Yeah, it don't even register to this guy. Well, I tell you, I'm just gonna let it play because we gotta get whatever you talking about here. I can't. My brother, your queen pulled my hair. When I try to get up, she pulls my hair back down. She pulled me back down to her. You that ain't got nothing to do with stop it. I think now you're trying to correct yourself. Just like when you said the boys and the girls, they're going to be staying with me. And then you pause and you go in the dorms. That don't, this don't even make no sense. She's saying stop it because you quote unquote getting up off top. Boy, but then she put what? She pull your hair and pull you what? I done told y'all. I done told y'all. I told y'all a long time ago. And, and this guy, and see, I did, and and then I told y'all today. I said that he has these days. He has less and less discipline to hide who he is and hide his true intentions, whether it's dealing with school or dealing with his other need to sexually exploit black women. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, no, no one's even asking Umar uh, anything about this, but he has to turn it into this because everything has to go back to sex. Because that's one of his primary objectives. That's one of his intentions. It's not about helping black boys. It's not about opening up a school. You understand me? The queens hold on to their hair. Listen, we're not even going to get into that. It's consciousness over cookies, politics over go. punani, revolution over romance, consciousness before cookies, politics over punani. Look at that background. Revolution before romance, institutions before the intimacy, business before. Look at the melanin dripping. Business before he said back in the day, business before back shots. That's what he said. Then he changed it because people were like, "What? This is going. This is all principle." No, he's, he's just a, he's a charlatan. He's a scam artist. He's a cyber criminal. That's what he is. Uh, Umar's content has emotionally scared me for life, uh, scarred me for life, and I need him to give me. <laughs> we were we were saying this the other day. Umar all back with reparations, okay? <laughs> Umar, you need to get on your cash app and send black people money because you you were <laughs> okay. Thanks, SOP. Yeah, sometimes he says stuff that's so out there and wild. Let me just go back. I, I don't want to, but I want to just put all this in context. 9858 if you need to fly or text my phone this ain't my school this is your school this school belongs to the american african this school no, belongs don't. this school belongs to the race this is an african racial institution brothers and sisters hit your cash app i'm not cutting my hair my brother stop worrying about my hair that is a very 
non-alpha male behavior right there. Why are you worrying about another man's hair? We need some testosterone injections. We don't need no COVID shot. We need some testosterone shots. Why are you worrying about my damn hair? Why are you worrying about my hair, my brother? Why are you worrying about my hair? I'm a warrior. I'm a Mau Mau warrior. I'm an Ethiopian warrior. I'm a Zulu warrior. I'm a Garvey warrior, brother. I'm not cutting my hair because when he out there freezing. When I make love, when I make love, your queen be grabbing my hair. Stop it, Papa. She say, Big Pop, stop it, Pop. If you're making love to the woman and and she's grabbing your hair and and saying, stop it. What? That's not making love. What? That sounds like she's trying to get you off of her. Boy, I tell you, I'm sorry. I don't mean to go there, but boy, this is this is wild right here. This is one of the Umar Johnson moments where you say, what? Y'all know damn well that if women say stop it, that it okay. Boy, I tell you. I, that right there is enough for anyone to say, wait a minute. She say, stop it, Papa. Stop worrying about my hair, my brother. Your queen pulled my hair. When I try to get up, she pulls my hair back down. She pulled me back down to her. You understand? Now she's pulling you back down to her, but she was telling you to stop pulling your hair and telling you to stop. We, let's move on. Stand me. The queens hold on to the hair. Listen, we're not even going to get into that. It's consciousness over cookies, politics over punani, revolution over romance, consciousness before cookies, politics over punani, revolution before romance, institutions before the intimacy, business before. Look at the melanin dripping. Lord have mercy. Look at yeah, that melanin drip. Y'all niggas hate being black. Wrong. Something wrong with y'all. Y'all hate y'all melanin. How you gonna hate your melanin? That's black gold. Wrong. That's <laughs> black gold, nothing. family. Worrying about my damn hair. Stop worrying about my damn hair. This is my antenna. This is how the ancestors communicate, my brother. This is my antenna. This is how the ancestors communicate, my brother. <laughs> Today is November 3rd. <laughs> G-Strang. Today is November 3rd. G and exactly. G Strange Jermaine. <laughs> Y'all crazy. All one right. year on November the 5th. Today is November the 3rd. And exactly well, one year ten, on November year, the 5th. Ago. Today is November the 3rd. And exactly one year. Yeah, well, that, that's what on, I, that's what I, when he was saying that, that's what came to my mind. But then he tried to flip it around and say, oh, she's just trying to pull me back down. Uh, no, nah, I don't know what he's talking about. He, he November here. the 5th, you are expected to go to the polls. You will be expected <laughs> to go to the voting the polls. <laughs> you will be expected to go to the voting poll and cast a vote for the next president of the United States. Today is November the 3rd. <laughs> one year from now, on November the 5th, 2024. <laughs> one year <laughs> from now, on November the 5th, 2024. <laughs> One year right, from now, on up. November the 5th, 2024. I got to put this light up on now. One institution. <laughs> you won, sincere Russell. You won. All right. I got to put the last one on because that one right there. All right. <laughs> there we go. Thank y'all so much, Cook Crush Chat. Hope y'all enjoying the show. Try not to have a too long show today. Not doing very well on time. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, let's go. For you will be asked to go to the election polls and cast the vote for the next president of the United States. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> what do we have to vote for? Brothers and I sisters, don't know what, talking about. what do we have to vote for? <laughs> this chat room crazy. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> what do we have? to vote for I, I just want to know <laughs> because uh, the NAACP 
<laughs> the NAACP. Thank you for What's the Philly Boys hoodie man? too, my brother. I picked Boy, it up from crazy. the post office yesterday. I'm rocking it right now. Philly Boys since oh, 2005, some Somebody gave which is the year free. I went to Africa. You don't even know. 2005, <laughs> that's the year I went to Africa for the first time. 2005, and it changed my life. Philly Boys, 215, <laughs> North Philly in the building, West Philly, South Philly, Southwest <laughs> Philly, Germantown, Mount Airy, <laughs> East Oak Lane. We when I was younger, I used to use a cone. I just, you know, I wish I could. These in the building. That's okay. <laughs> we in the building. Exactly. Why is he outdoors? If the renovations are done, why aren't you lodging inside in this nice plush? <laughs> All right. I'm tripping. Hold on. Here we go. Never get to vote on what matters. No oh, good. To vote on the issues that free, I ask you one question. If you say we are free, I'm going to ask you one question. If black people are free, can you name a presidential election where we were able to vote on the things that matter to us if you claim we are free? I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I want you to. Well, you free to get on this Internet all day, every day, and there's still no schools. <laughs> you free enough to ask for, for money on the cash app. You free enough to get out here and, and, and not be inside these traps and be out instead be outside freezing. That's freedom. <laughs> Give us free. Give us free. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Give us free. All right. 497 out of 991. And that I mean likes we have is 497. That's really good. Thank y'all so much. We got about 985 people in the building. We got a thousand people in the building now. That's Umar. He just came in. <laughs> Why don't you come on down? Why don't you come on down? Uh, thanks uh, for the super chat, Bob. Appreciate it. Here we go. Understand, overstand, and understand. If black people are free, can you name me <laughs> the presidential election? <laughs> that was one of the funniest classic moments where Umar, the police, was going through his through his luggage in the back of his rental. And Uma was like, I got, I, I got, I got it, boss. So I'll clean it up for you. <laughs> Don't you come on down. <laughs> well, that was one of the funniest moments. There's right. been 46 presidential elections. There's been 46 <laughs> yeah. presidential elections. Yeah, Dominique, that's what he said. He said, I'll clean it up for you, boss. <laughs> I said, wow. I ain't going to pull it up because we got to get going here. But that's what he said. How's it going? Elections. Up? or near that amount. Can you name one where black people were able to vote on the- This kind of reminds me of the Kobe rant for some reason. I don't know why, but it reminds the me of The issues that matter to it American sure Africans. Cold out Can there you name right now. which presidential election were we able to <laughs> vote on issues that matter? And if you say- <laughs> You want that cornbread? <laughs> <laughs> all right all right we got 500 thank y'all so much i appreciate it none we did good if you today. say we have never voted on the issues that matter if you say that how can you also say we are free it's really nippy out there i remember when Uwan was going off on uh i, I really want to do a like a, I don't know, it'll probably take 10 hours, a 10 hour live stream. It may take longer than that and do the top five Umar rants. But in one of the rants where he was going off on uh, Tariq Nasheed, he was talking about why you got on lip gloss, all that lip gloss, you know, and here Umar. Dang, he, this how long you gonna do? To all my queens, let me give a kiss to the butter almonds. Let me get a kiss to the butter pecan. Let me give a kiss to the caramels. Let me give a kiss to the chocolate fudge. Let me give a kiss to the sweet brown sugar. Let me give a kiss to the warm peanut butter. Let me give a kiss to the African vanilla, the African lemonade, the African pistachio. Mwah. I love my black sisters. I love my black sisters. Stop hating, my ninja. You need a testosterone shot. 
I told y'all that this is what it's about. It's about getting money to fulfill the lifestyle, and it's about crushing the cookies. I told y'all. And he always comes back to this. Notice he's not talking anything, and he wasn't all, he was able to hold it back back in the day, and he would be talking about things, you know, he said seem to be relevant to black boys and the prison system or the school to prison pipeline, as he calls it, uh, which I don't believe in uh, because none of my boys are in prison and they've been through the school system and one still going through it. Now, if they get into some trouble later on, it ain't going to be because of the school. It's going to be because they made up some stupid, they done made some stupid decisions. My job is to make sure they minimize on stupid decisions. Amen. But if they do, that's on them. It ain't on me at that point. Okay. So I, I, I don't believe in that. I think that parents have to be actively involved. And if you're actively involved, they're active participants in your child's life and in your child's education. The school is not a, a pipeline to prison. One could also argue that a lot of the people that in the, when I was at least when I was growing up, a lot of the people that was going to jail was the ones that wasn't going to school. Was there people who went to school that went to jail too? Yeah, but that's because they was out there doing stupid sh stuff. They ain't got nothing to do with the school. School ain't gonna say go bust a drive by. School ain't teaching boys. Let's go go and be a, go be a crip. Go be a blood. It was literally blood blood territory. Schools in blood territory. Eastside Fire Group. That's not what the school is teaching. So you don't blame the school for the environmental factors inside of a community because that that's that's a separate uh, institution, if you will. But if parents are active participants in their children's life, you're going to minimize the probability of your child getting caught up in some foolishness. But see, back then, Umar, he used to spit that kind of stuff and it kind of made sense, but he was able to control himself enough to where his true agenda wasn't out there. But here we are these days in 2023 going into 2024. And Cookie Crush that he can't help himself. It always comes back. Now he's blowing kisses. And let me tell y'all something. There's nothing manly about that. It speaks to desperation. There's nothing manly about someone getting up here. Oh, no. And I would think that a, a, a woman who has some sense would look at that and say, what? No. And then the, then the colorism, pina colada queens and the, the hot fudge and the brown sugar salt uh, marmalade, whatever he said. That's all talking about skin color. So he has the colorism. He's a colorist, too. That's enough to step back from all this anyway. Any of y'all women in the cookie crush chat, the super queens, any of y'all find that to be attractive or appealing for him to be up here doing this? I, I highly doubt. Now, some of y'all might. <laughs> I ain't going to. I ain't here to judge, but I highly doubt that. Nubia, what about I'm just playing. <laughs> Black Lilith? <laughs> Sharon. <laughs> to all my queens, let me give a kiss to the butter almonds. Let me get a kiss to the butter pecan. Let me give a kiss to the caramels. Let me give a kiss to the chocolate fudge. Yeah, let me give a kiss to the sweet brown sugar. It really is. Let me give a kiss to the warm peanut butter. Let me give a kiss to the African vanilla, the African lemonade, <laughs> the African this. pistachio. Mwah. I love my black sisters. God, I love God. my black sisters. Stop hating my ninja. You need a <laughs> testosterone shot. I'm going to start selling testosterone shots for beta males. There I'm going go. to start selling testosterone shots for beta males. He's, I'm not kissing you, African. I'm kissing the queens. It's interesting how his mind works. He'll, uh, okay, we got to get a solution to this issue. We're going to sell testosterone shots to beta males. Then he says, I'm going to start. He ain't doing nothing. We need some testosterone shots. We need some testosterone shots for these beta males. We need Ooh, some funny, testosterone though. shots. <laughs> What's up, squirrel girl? Big sis candy. Because y'all ninjas is worrying said. about me and my queendom. That was for the Ifa Tunde queendom. I'm not kissing you ninjas. I'm not into that, my brother. I'm yeah, not he, into that. Thirsting. I'm kissing the <laughs> oh, queendom. <laughs> Yeah, he thirsting on the internet. I can't give my sisters a platonic kiss? Are you telling me I can't show love to African women? You brothers are operating in your lower chakra. I need you to come on up to your third eye chakra. Okay, he's projecting right here. He's projecting big time. No worries, everyone. The neighborhood crackheads and tramps will be the... <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so don't worry about it. We ain't got to worry about no budget operating costs. <laughs> you know, you get the crackheads, <laughs> get the crackheads to work for real cheap. We know that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should do that. I should do that. Okay. We, let's let's move on. Thanks, old, old, Southern, old Southern cooks. <laughs> As Umar, as Umar's plan anyway. <laughs> the board director is going to be Pookie and Ray Ray. All right, Christopher uh, Blackshear, how's it going, Christopher? Says Umar blocked Tommy Sotomar on IG because he was asked why he hadn't debated Tommy. He knows he would be destroyed by Tommy in his debate. <laughs> well, I think with Umar, uh, any pressurized situation, he can't handle it. Because I remember when uh, they had uh, Umar in. Cynthia G. I think they took her off of YouTube, but they they uh, had her her and Umar on uh, a panel. Umar didn't know she was going to be on it, and you should see how he couldn't. He he just doesn't have the self discipline. Uh, someone else ar makes another point, argues a point, uh, he'll lose it. He'll either lose or he'll start yelling or he'll raise his voice. And I've seen him do this, where he's just he he can't he has no self control whatsoever. He also believes that he's right about everything. That's a problem. That's why the idea of of uh, he's like a uh, megalomaniac. The, the idea of of uh, of working for someone like that, for people to send in resumes, that that's astounding in and of itself. Why would you want to work for someone like that? He he wouldn't be able to handle any debate with anybody. If if Umar agreed to come on to the show, and we would simply talk about FDMG, nothing else, all the other stuff we just said it aside, we specifically talk about FDMG, he wouldn't do it. If someone said, uh, we'll give you a, a, a $10,000, he, he wouldn't do it. If if he had to answer honestly, he wouldn't do it. I don't even think he could on, answer honestly because he, he's a habitual liar. If someone said, okay, we're going to give you $50,000 to come on to uh, Linden on Honor show, quick press chat, and you have to answer everything honestly and you're going to be on for two hours he wouldn't do it I, I would say within the first four minutes he would lose it he, he wouldn't be able to cont uh, contain himself he'll be yelling and screaming and probably start cursing and get all upset because that's how he is so debating is is it's not his lane it never has been his lane uh he doesn't have the self-discipline uh to do that and um U umar is very he's very particular even when he goes on to interview guests, to uh, go on people's show to be interviewed, he, he specifically selects people that are going to give him softball questions. Usually they're fans of his, they're supporters of his, but but you rarely see him uh, getting on, uh, uh, being interviewed where they're asking critical questions. They're asking critical questions about the school. They're asking questions about how much money he's raised, asking questions about how, why it is that he's, he's taken this long and why he keeps changing the opening date. He, he he wouldn't be able to handle that, whether it's a question of a form where they're asking him critical questions or if it's a debate, he, he wouldn't do it, even if they paid him to do it. But he would see if they paid him to do it and he can do as he does, which is a lie, he'll do it. But if they paid him and he he has to answer, honestly, he would not take that. He, he would not take he wouldn't take 50,000, would take 100,000. He wouldn't do it. Uh, thanks, Christopher, for the, for the shoot. And also thanks, uh, Dion, as well, and whole Southern uh, uh, Cooks. So Umar said that a praying mantis followed him home from Africa and claimed that it was his ancestors and he kept it. No, Dion, no way. What video is that? I mean, you know what? I, I believe it. I believe because I remember there were some grasshoppers on the wall one time of FDMG. I can pull it up and show it to you all. And he was talking about it's the ancestors. I think it was grasshoppers. Yeah, grasshoppers. Was it grasshoppers? Yeah, I think it was grasshoppers. Cougar chat. Y'all, y'all remember that? So I'm not surprised by that. I would just like to see it, you know. I, again, I haven't been uh, watching Umar videos for like eight months. I just uh, so I, even though it's shocking, I'm not actually surprised when I think about. It. I put it in context where he said other things about insects and ancestors and stuff. So he boy, he out there. He is. Yeah, you know the name of that video. If you can post it inside of the uh, uh, the the chat room, he said he said he went to the slave coast and it followed him. <laughs> what? Was this in the video where he was get? What video is this? You got the name of it? I'll I'll, I'll check in the chat room. I'll, I'm gonna see. Or you can email me if if you know what video it is. You st you should still have my email. Yeah, if if, if you know the name of it, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll go find it. I mean, I'm I'm not surprised. It's just it's bizarre, but I've heard him say similar things in the past, so that's why it is believable. But I, again, I gotta see it. I gotta see it. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Let's go. So you dealing with sex. I'm not dealing with sex. I'm dealing with love of my sisters, platonic love. Too many beta males in the chat. 
Too many, we need some testosterone shots. Somebody get some of the black doctors on the phone. Can we get some testosterone shots? Some of these brothers need some testosterone shots. Can we sell some alpha male tablets? Can we get some alpha, alpha male, male tablets, tablets in here for the beta males? It's a few recent videos. Baltimore, here. Maryland, I want to see you, you Friday night, November the 10th at the open house. Does he books. have it in a jar or what? So he says, it, did he get it from... No, he could, but, but is, did, does he say he got it from Africa? You can't bring no insects from one country. They don't, they don't allow that. I don't know. <laughs> I really want to see it now. Let's keep going. Sure. Baltimore, Maryland. I want to see you Friday night, November the tenth, at the open. Yeah, the alpha store. male tablet. Baltimore, Maryland. I want to see you Friday night from five p.m. until eight p.m. <laughs> at the alpha open out bookstore in Baltimore, Virginia. Africans, I want to see you Saturday afternoon for the Nat Turner celebration. We honoring Nat Turner <laughs> on the day he was executed. We Platonic. honoring Nat Turner, Platonic. the greatest revolutionary in America. Platonic, platonic love kisses. <laughs> He really is. He, he can't help it. He lied so much. It's incredible. American soil on the day he was executed. <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee. I want to see all my Tennessee Africans uh, on Saturday, November the 25th for the Black Parent Boot Camp. The Black Parent Boot Camp. Memphis, Tennessee. I want to see Nashville. I want to see Knoxville. I want to see Chattanooga. All y'all better come yeah, real quick. I'm fine. Just wondering why a guy is talking about someone who appears to want to help children. No, he doesn't want to help children. That's the whole point. That's that's the con. When was the last child you saw Umar help? I'll wait. When's the last time you saw Umar with a child? Helping them. I'll wait. Let's just pause here for a moment. We're going to pause right here. And I'm going to take you, I'll take this off because I don't want you to take anything personal. And I'm going to pull something up for you all. Let's just pause just for a moment here. And we're going to let this breathe for just a second. When was the last time you saw Umar? Let's say over the last 13 years, how many times have you seen Umar helping children? I already, I already told everybody. And hear me when I say this. It's Umar doesn't help children. He just uses that, he uses that as the lure to gain access to more money. I'm going to open up a school for black boys. There is no school. And to gain access to, to black women so that he can crush those cookies, the pina colada cookies, the hot fudge cookie, the uh, warm salt cookie, the, the butter pecan cookies. This is what he says. This is what he says. Blowing kisses at you at the same time. It, that's not about helping children. That's about using children as a lure to gain access to money and to gain access to access to sex. And it's that simple. But let, let me find let me find this, uh, everybody. Hold on one second, because I want to show you all something. Some of y'all may have seen it. Most of y'all have not. This idea that Umar is helping children. He's called for the murder of, of black boys. I can pull up the receipt right now. That's helping black children. He's called little girls been raped molested. He said they're thoughts. They call them holes. That's helping black children? No. Let me see if this comes up. Give me one second. I have it in, in uh, I have it archived. I can't remember what I called it. Um, it was a, somebody help me out here. It was a live black parent uh, teleconference. No, it wasn't that because he was inside this lady's house. Give me a second. You know what? I, I can find it another way. 
So this is an older video. Let's just pause right here for a moment. Okay, here it is right here. So uh, even though I have it, I have it, I'm going to uh, online, the online version. I want to actually see, I, I want to pull it up at, in my archive so I can have the direct file uh, loaded. And I'm going to actually store this in this other folder uh, so that I can pull it up at another time because it, it's actually worth watching as a separate video. This is, it's from 2018. Uh, we can do a separate Umar Johnson live and get into this. So th it's called Dr. Umar Johnson First Live Black Parent Consultation. So let me pull this up here uh, right now. Now, you see how I'm doing this. I'm not yelling. I'm not screaming. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. None of that. OK, it's rational, critical thinking. And I'm going to provide you with the receipt uh, for, for you to consider and for everyone else to consider, because it's not just about you considering. Everyone should consider this right here. Let me go ahead and pull up the file now. Right, I'm in the proper folder. And then let me pull up the actual video. Here it is right here. And here we go. Y'all check this out. Oh. The only live. We on? I think. I think we are. Okay. Oh. Okay. You good? Six people just joined. Yep. Okay. So we good. Good evening, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. Umar Johnson. I am live in South Jersey. And today I'm going to be conducting my very first live black parent consultation. The reason we're doing this live is we want to give you guys an opportunity to learn about some. All right. Now, is he helping children here? Hold on. Watch this. Some of the issues that we're having in school, public, parochial, charter, and independent school, as it relates to protecting our children. Although most of the time we're talking about saving our sons, tonight we're going to be talking about saving one of our daughters, one of our beautiful black princesses. Sounds noble, right? Sitting up there. You know, some of y'all may assume that he's there to help this child, this good little girl, right? Well, hold on. So tonight's consult is going to focus on one of our young ladies. This is not a therapy session. That is not a psychological evaluation. And we want to thank the mom, the mother, our sister, the queen here, for being gracious enough to let you guys in her home to hear this conversation in hopes that if there's some other black parents out there going through the same thing that she's going through, you'll be able to learn about some strategies, some techniques, some laws, and some steps that you can take to help Somebody protect your children the light. <laughs> as she's learning to protect hers. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Good evening. How you doing today, young lady? Good evening, Dr. Lamar Johnson. All right. All Somebody right. said, please turn the light. Now, you can't be talking because you take them. Okay. Now, tell me a little. This is why I talk about this guy. And for those of y'all who don't get it quite yet, who's holding the phone? The little girl whose mama's sitting on the couch next to Umar is holding the phone. While Umar and the mama tell all her business live for everyone to hear, and she's holding the phone, and this video is 57 minutes and 15 seconds long. Hello?
They tell all the girls' business too. And she, and she stands there for 57 minutes and 15 seconds holding the phone for Umar while he's sitting next to her mama on the couch. That's why I'm saying, yeah, it may appear that he's helped. To some of y'all, it may appear that he's trying to help these as if he's trying to help these children. That's not what this is. Do I need to go pull up another receipt? Let me get to my notes here. I'm, I apologize. Y'all yeah, just be paying me right here. <laughs> I'd like the show to continue and stay fluid, but it is what it is. Y'all just hold on one second. Let me see if this is still, it may not even be up anymore. I have it in archive, but I, I can't remember what the title was. It's been so long. Let me see. Yeah, it's still up here. All right, check this out. Yeah, here it is right here. Okay, I'm going to play this. I'm going to do a screen share. Here we go. Share the audio. Let me know if you guys can hear this audio. Here we go. Check this out. Go right. All right. Thank you. No problem, my brother. Yeah, am I up? Yes, sir. Where you calling from? Go right in. Yes, sir. Chicago is Tuesday the 26th, first day of Kwanzaa. Harold Jackson Center, 6 o'clock. Yeah, Doors yeah, open I'm, at 4. I'm going to holler at you because about two months ago, my old lady called in and gave her some advice. And um, she followed up with it, but it put What advice did I give her? No, tell me what you're talking about first. What advice did I give her? First of all, I know exactly what I'm... Whoa, whoa, time out, time out, time out, time out, bro. Wait, time out, time out, time out. Time, dude, bruh, bruh. All right, then see me then, see me then, see me then. And get off my call, see me then. You ain't even tell... Wait, what, 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 what kind... All right, I'll see you then, don't threaten me. You still ain't told me. You still haven't said what piece of advice I gave your old lady to follow. You still ain't told me. So tell me that first. You need to talk to her because she won't even disclose it. I found so her how her you know what I told her if she won't even disclose it? If she won't disclose it, how you know? She called in. 
If she won't disclose it. First of all, everything I say is good. Everything I say is good. All right, we going to have a conversation then. Everything I share is good, bruh. You don't know me. Everything I share is good. You ain't told me yet. Whatever, man. You just a hater, bruh. You just a hater. You ain't even told me what, what, what information, man. What advice did I give? You still ain't told me yet. Come on, man. You just call it in hating. What you talking about? What advice did I give it that was wrong? You still ain't said. I'm going to go to the next caller. Go ahead. Go ahead. What about the IEP? There's a million issues with the IEP. Yo, Black Joe. Again, it may appear as if he's helping black children, but he's not. See, most of the people who go to Umar, they're in desperate situations anyway. They're desperate for answers. But see, when you're desperate, you're highly emotional, and that emotionalism compromises proper intellectual processing, critical thinking skills. He's not out here to help black boys or black girls for that matter. If he's out here to help, you want me to bring some more receipts? we can do this all night we can go we can literally do this for the next four hours i wasn't planning on it. i would have to go into my notes and pull it but we can literally do this for the next four hours of me playing clips like this it may appear as if he's trying to help black children but like i said that's part of the long con he's been doing this for over 13 years he has no interest in helping uh, black children his interest is to gain access to black women to get more money and to get more draws and it's that simple. I've studied this guy. I've researched this guy. I've analyzed this guy. Everything that I say about him, I can pull up receipts. But you see how I can do it just like that? One, I can pull something else up for you right now, too. And again, I'm not here trying to be mean. I just want to be clear about something that this is why I talk about Umar. He's out here destroying people's lives. He cares about children. Well, if he cares about children, why is he, and I don't mean to go here, but why has he been on child support for 20 years? And I'm not just talking about every once in a while being on child support. He says he pays his child support in bulk, and I can pull it up right now. What kind of man? If you're paying your child support in bulk, that means you're letting it accumulate while your child is going without, and then you decide when you're ready or when the court calls him in with the bench warrant, and I can pull up the receipts right now, then you decide. Or when they revoke your license plate, then you say, oh, let me go ahead and go put some money on my child. You telling me he cares about black children? If he don't care about his own, what makes you think he care about anybody else's? So don't get up here, and again, I'm not being mean. I'm proving a point. Don't get up here telling me and asking me, why are you talking about Umar? He appears. Well, the fact that you say he appears means that you have some doubt. But if you had doubt, then you should know the truth. Now, there is no doubt. Deal with the truth. Deal with the reality of the situation. He's nothing more than a charlatan, a con man. He's a cyber criminal who's out here hustling to get that money and to get that pool tank. <laughs> he said I pay my child support for both family we're going to leave it at that <laughs> okay bring the pain <laughs> all right all right <laughs> all right I'm sorry Let's move on, shall we? Because we can do this all night. I literally, I could just pull up one after one, one after one, and we can go all night long. <laughs> we gonna leave it at that, family. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I wasn't mean. If I was too mean, somebody let me. I apologize to the person. I don't. I, I the passion. Please don't think I'm mad. I'm passionate about uh, talking about someone like Umar because I understand and know what he's doing and the amount of harm that he's caused and the lying and, and just lying over and over and over again. And really, the lying is really the way uh, to continue to push this scam, this long con 
which is to get money out of people and to gain access to black women so that he could sexually exploit y'all. That's why I'm passionate about it, because it's wrong. You just see, okay, let me, I'm going to go pull things down. And thanks, he's before Super Chat, too. Uh, that, that's what I'm saying, money. When was the last time we seen Umar with his own kids? Umar admitted that uh, he, at that time, it was a few, it was maybe five years ago, that he didn't, he couldn't see his child, one of his child, he couldn't even see his, his daughter without uh, being supervised. You think he cares about black children? Listen, that, that, people need to get beyond it. He's called for the murder of black boys. I can pull that up right now. I ain't going to do it because we got to get going. We ain't got no progress tonight. Got 950 people. Y'all hit the like button. Uh, thanks for all the tests, everybody. All right, let's get back to it. Here we go. I hope I wasn't too, wasn't, I hope people, the person don't think I was being mean. I am not trying to be mean at all. Okay, I'm, I just, you got to let people know and, and, and be straightforward with it. But we could literally do this all night. I could pull up receipt after receipt after receipt of this guy that shows and proves that, no, he doesn't care about black children. He's not trying to help black children. Just think up there in Wilmington. He's been up there for five years. When's, when did, did he, has he ever done a food drive for the children out there? Has he ever done a backpack drive for the children out there? Has he started up a sports league for children out there? He done collected close to $3 million. He ain't done nothing up there. Has he had an after-school program? Well, there's no school. Has he educated one child up there? No. His target is not children. His target is you single mothers and you, you black women in general, but you single mothers in particular. That's his target audience. That's why when he gets with, with a woman and he's giving her bad advice, then the husband steps in and, and, and confronts Lamar. You see how he acts because he ain't used to dealing with men. That's not his target audience. He wants the money from the men, but he wants the money and he wants the cookies from the women. That's not about helping black boys. It's not about helping black children either. So people need to come off of that because I hear you, my John Spies, you, you believe that foolishness. It is foolishness. I'm not calling you a fool. I'm saying that you're believing in something that is not true. And once the facts are revealed to you and shown, I already showed it, and I can pull up many of that. That's when you have to make the shift and say, okay, wait a minute. He's not who he said he was. I, I can't defend this. And yeah, people should hold him accountable. And it should not just be me. Okay. I take an eight month break and I come back. He's still doing the same thing. Bring back Len Nintendo, play Mike Tyson. That was my favorite game. I, I, I kid you all not. I played that game so much. I remember one time I played it and I sat inside this, uh, you know, them old chairs you could put this like a comfortable chair. You can pull a thing and it lay back like this. We had an old beat up one. I put it in my room and I had my Nintendo little, little TV. It was probably about this big. That antennas on it, but it was still color. And I played Mike Tyson punch out for like two and a half days straight. And I remember my mom, she came in the room. She says, you ain't got up yet. I mean, you ain't, you've been sitting here. What you been doing? <laughs> I've been playing this game. She said, you ain't got up. I said, how long? I said, it's been about two. I don't know, two and a half days. She was so mad. <laughs> Uh, but I got so good at that game that, and because I, I could, I, I could memorize. Back then, they didn't have; it wasn't really AI. Everything was it was just programmed. Like you know, you just if you do the same thing, they're going to do the same thing, okay? and you just have to react to it. I literally could beat that game uh, and not and beat Mike Tyson with my eyes closed. That is that shows you how much time I wasted uh, playing that just by the hearing. Because before he do his punch, he, there's a sound, a certain sound that it would make. Because I memorized it based upon sound. And, and then uh, when he would when he would do this punch, there was a, a different sound that would go with that. So I memorized his his the program itself, but then I memorized the audio, you know, the sounds, and then I can close my eyes and actually play that game and beat my dad. Couldn't do that with uh, Macho Man though. He's actually was harder to me than uh, Mike Tyson. All right, uh, thanks for super chat. Okay, let's get back to the video of today. I don't think we're gonna get to all four, but we'll get to as many as we can. All right, here we go. Save your damn children. Because we don't need to see another situation like we got going on in Florida with our brother Brendan Depa. Brendan Depa, we going to who coming with me on January the 31st to the sentencing trial for Brendan Depa? Who coming with the King Kong consciousness? Oh, that, that was my, that was, that may be my, well, I don't think it's my favorite. It's got to be top five. Tech Mobile, Zelda. Mike Tyson punch out and Blaster Master. I only beat that game twice. One time I beat it and everyone went down to go play basketball and I, we, I had to beat it again to show them that I beat it. That's four. I can think of one more, uh, but those are my top four right there. All right, here we go. I'm sorry. I, 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 you see, I go off. I'll be going off this month. Here we go.
Where, where, the, where the court hearing that? Is it going to be in Palm Coast, Florida? <laughs> Sega Is it Genesis. going to be in Jacksonville, Florida? <laughs> We're going to show our young brother yeah, some Sega support. Genesis too. We're going to go show our young brother some support, brother. Yeah, I got the, the homie uh, got us a uh, uh, Sega Genesis because well, I, he had gotten a hold of all of these old base vintage baseball cards. I mean. These days, it was millions of millions of dollars worth of baseball cards, probably 10 million, more than 10 million by, uh, by today's standards. But we're talking old stuff. Mickey Mantle, uh, Babe Ruth, them old cards. Some, now, some of them cards were about like this big. He had th those. I ain't going to say no, nothing else, but he came up on all of this uh, all the way up to like Reggie Jackson, because um, this was in. This was in the 80s. Yeah, this was in the 80s, probably the mid 80s. And but he didn't know the value of any of that stuff. But me and my brother, we collected um, baseball cards. I ain't gonna say any anything else about location or names or anything. But he 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 uh, he wanted us to look into it. And we had these books back then. I'm sure they still have. We probably got them online now. But these books that would tell you the value of baseball cards. Each per, each year, they'll come out with a new version of these books. And uh, my brother and I, we were looking through it, and these cards back then. Four thousand dollars, six thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars. There was ones that was like a hundred, two hundred. Those were the you know Reggie Jackson rookie card at that time, that kind of stuff. Um, but some of them were so so expensive. So um, what he once we told him how much they were they were, were valued at, he was like, oh okay, well I'm gonna hook y'all up. And and so I remember, and he messed up because we went to. Uh, that back then they had baseball card shops and we went to this one baseball card shop and he says what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna sell some of these so I, uh, what you guys want he said well we want a sega genesis he's like I'm, okay i'm gonna go sell a, a card or two and we, I'm, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna hit you all up we're gonna get you a sega genesis. And so he was like okay cool <laughs> so we went to this um we was kids we went to this this baseball card shop and we walked in and the, the guy i already was uncomfortable he's a white guy and and you know my family member members he wasn't direct family but he was friends of the family and and uh, you know he's gang banging and all this stuff uh but we uh we walked up in there the guy was uncomfortable and he was so he pulled i started pulling up cards and you should have seen the guy's face he was like wow you know he then at a certain point he was like so you want what do you want to do he says oh, i want to sell something he just says okay well where'd you get these from <laughs> Anyway, he said he said he got it from his grand his grandfather or something. It was passed down from his grandfather or something like that. These are old vintage baseball cards that are worth millions of dollars these days. Um, and so he sold. I can't even remember how much he sold one of them for. Uh, the, the the price I think it was it was probably like in the, the book it was somewhere around five hundred six hundred dollars. And he the guy says no, I can give you three hundred or whatever. He gave he gave him a lowball offer, but you know it, whatever it's it's free in essence because he didn't pay for them. Um, he didn't acquire them. I'll leave it at that. But anyway, he uh, he got the money, gave him a car. I think he sold another one to him, too. And he kept that money. And then he took us and bought us a, a Sega Genesis. <laughs> he got us the game, too. It came with Ultra Beast, but I think he got us a Tom and the Sword of Baseball. OK, anyway. But these days, those cards, it, we're talking it's over. It would be over well over 10 million dollars worth of because he had a whole uh, like a whole, I don't even know. It's like a chess, like a big old chest of them. He just brought a couple of them in in a small box, and we were looking at those. And then he ended up getting caught um, with them in a trunk by the police, and uh, that was that. You know, they they probably they probably took them bad boys. Like, okay, yeah, we gonna. But who knows? The guy that he sold them to, he could have uh, called the police or, or you know snitched, and then the homie might have went back up there to go sell some more, and then they might have hemmed him up that way. Ain't no telling. All right, here we go. Brendan Depper, who's awaiting sentencing at the hands of the white power structure in Florida. We coming yeah, that was 1 30 p.m. January the 31st. I will be there, God willing. 1 30 p.m. January the 31st. Right okay, come on, Stephon. 1 30 p.m. January the 31st. We pulling up. <laughs> up here, betting up here. Like we pulling up. Will the real activist please yeah, stand Yeah, was a good one, too. Your will the real activist is Jones? going to be at the okay. Kim Hammond Justice Center, yeah, 1769 yeah, East yep, Moody Boulevard, Boonell, Florida. Kim C. Hammond <laughs> Justice Center, 1769 East Moody Boulevard, Bunnell, Florida. B U double N E double L. Yeah, we do that all the time. B U double N E double L, Florida. B U double N E double L, Florida, 1769 East Moody Boulevard. 
January 31st, 1.30, yep, pull-up season. Pull-up yep, season. Yep. Pull-up season. Stop worrying about make sure I got some money. Bring your ass <laughs> this down This is a good there. one, too. Rushing the tackle. Bring your one. ass down there. Here we go. Y'all don't be showing up. Y'all only show up to YouTube. Y'all only... But I thought you were the most requested. Only show up to YouTube. Y'all only show up to YouTube, brothers and sisters. Hit the cash <laughs> app. Dollar sign FDMG school. Who texting my phone right yep. now? Yeah, I think I have. Good morning. At some point. How long are you in Wilmington? I'm here every day, all day. I got nothing else to do. Yeah, this was the game. Oh, right here. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, it didn't up, it, I'm sorry. This was my game right here. Double Dragon was good. Uh, I also like that original basketball game on uh, the original Nintendo. Double Brothers three. and sisters, I want to give you an update on Brendan Depper. Brothers and sisters, I want to give you an update. Folks we'll started complaining. And when they charged them as an adult, they should have. I don't have time for the coonery this morning. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, don't, he I can't deal with lazy Africans. I had to block you. It's something. Somebody uh -oh. said, you're the activist, you do it. I'm going to block you for that, ladies. <laughs> I want to give a speech on this situation. I want to give a speech on this situation, brothers and sisters. January the 31st, Black African New Year. January yeah, the that was my game. I used to love that game, except for that boss level. You get to that that one boss, and it looks it, it literally looks like some balls. I said, what the <laughs> I was like, huh? Anybody remember that? Hit the one. That was back in the day. All right, let me get back to it. But that was a great game. 31st. I love that game. Black African New Year. Yeah, Castlevania Genu was great. Castlevania 1 and 2. Uh, Castlevania 1, it took me a long time to beat that. I used to love that game. January the 31st. If somebody can look into how we can get a permit, I need somebody to get the permit done. Text my cell. 2159. Somebody said you're the activist. You do it. I'm going to block you for that, lazy ass. <laughs> What's up, Cases? Yeah, Contra was great. I used to look. Well, you can change your image. Come on, D. Nero Jones, please. Block party. <laughs> That's Negro. I'm going to block you for that. Y'all want me to do everything. Yeah. I got to save the kids, build the schools, and get the damn permit. The permit, he ain't built nothing, and he ain't saving kids. We already addressed that earlier. Now you talking about a permit? Well, that's a hard work, I guess. Easy ass black people. I got to save the kids, build the schools, and get the protest permit. <laughs> Y'all want me protest. to save the kids, oh, okay. build the schools, raise the consciousness, help the parents, and get the building permit? Lazy ass. I had to block you. I can't deal with lazy black people. I'm sorry. I can't deal with lazy. Projecting. Lazy Africans, I had to block you. Is somebody in Florida yeah, going to look into how we can get a permit for January the 31st? I remember my girlfriend's mom gave me $20 before, it was right before I was going to go to college. He's like, make sure you use this for whatever you need for college. Back then, $20 is a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> he gave me $20 and I went to the arcade and I played NBA jams. And I, 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 I mean, I was shocked when I looked in my pocket and all my money. Because, you know, you got to get quarters. All it was gone. <laughs> I said, Damn, I just twenty dollars is gone back in the day. But then it came out on the console. Outside of that courthouse building, outside of that, what are you protesting? I'm gonna block you. Yeah, I remember Goodbye. that. One too. Yep. He said, What are we protesting? Block. I don't have time for the coonery this morning. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't have time for the Negro P and E Lee. I'm sorry. I can't take there. it today. I can't take it today. Where's the school at? Have a nice oh, day. I didn't, I didn't school? do nothing. She just gave it to me. She was being nice. She was just being nice. But I, I didn't do nothing. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden, that was great. That was great. The graphics, they had these cut scenes in that one. And it was kind of uh, ahead of its time for back then. Nowadays, people are like, oh, that's no big deal. But back then, Ninja Gaiden, that, that, the, those cut scenes were awesome. No, I, I didn't do nothing. She just gave it to me. I, the thing, though, I, the, the mom, though, she used to be like, she'd be sitting on the couch and being a girlfriend. We could all be living over there. I was just ridiculous. Oh, let me go get pull up this video, Dion. I'm, I'm tripping. Um, but she used to be sitting on the couch and when me and my girlfriend would leave, she'd be like, excuse me. I'm looking. She's like, Michael.
You had a mustache too. I, I said, man, damn, man. What you won't do, do for love. I tried everything. And I, I'm changing keys. And I, 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 huh? All right, go on ahead. All right, let me let this play. I'm going to go find this other video. Black. Goodbye. Goodbye. We having a block party. Goodbye. Good. He said, where the school at? And I'm sitting at the school. Goodbye. Goodbye. Somebody. That's not a school. Those are abandoned buildings. He said, you also got to romance the queens. Oh, yes. We don't have to romance them sexually, though. We just got to support the sisters. Brothers must go. practice sexual discipline. Brothers go. must practice sexual discipline. Are we standing up with the situation in Philly? I don't know. You tell me, Philly, Steve-O. What are you doing in Philadelphia, Steve-O? Or you want to give me another responsibility? Or you want to... this? Oh, man, you calling people the N-word with a white Jesus? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Who else? I think we have... Let's have a five-minute block party. Who else? Let's have a five-minute block party. Who else? Let's have a five-minute block party. Who else want to get blocked? Who want to go to the block party? I'm, I'm giving out tickets for the block party. See, now, just to show this is what I mean we were talking about earlier, how Umar doesn't have discipline. He just he goes off the rails. But you notice how when the person who asked the question, or it wasn't even a question, I don't think they were saying, uh, trying to figure out why I'm talking about Umar or whatever. I didn't do that. Now, I may get past it, but I'm not going to disrespect the person and call you names and the, the C word. You know, Umar loves calling black people that. It's a racial epithet. Um, I, I'm not going to do that. You know, I may joke sometimes. I may clown, but I'm not I'm not going to do that. Umar doesn't have it. What I'll do is I'll provide receipts. I'll make a statement. And I'll provide receipts to back it up. Umar doesn't do that. He goes off the rails. Um, th and this goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It, it, in a debate scenario, he wouldn't have the levels of discipline needed to get to a debate. He would he would just go off the rails at some certain point. He would get uh, really angry and start yelling. So uh, Dion sent me the video. Oh my goodness, he does have a praying mantis. What in the world? Hold on one second. He's just like a big old kid. I'm not shocked, but you know, because he's done stuff like this. And thanks, Dion, for sending this too. I appreciate it. Let me let me share this with y'all real quick. Here we go, right here. Let's see what he's talking about. I see my praying mantis right there. When I came back from the slave dungeons of Cameroon, there was a praying mantis waiting for me on the door. And then I did my research on praying mantis and I learned that Cameroon has its own species of praying mantis. I said Cameroon has its own uh, A lot of places have their own species of praying, praying, praying mantis. What are you talking about, Greg? Species of praying mantis. I said Cameroon has its own species of and is that the right is terminology? What is he talking about? A praying mantis. Do you know what that means, brothers and sisters? Do you know what that means? That what means mean? this praying mantis came back with the prince of Pan-Africanism. This praying mantis came back with me from the slave dungeons of Bimbia, crossed the Atlantic Ocean, and met me at my house. I said the answer. ancestors are with us right now brothers and sisters i've had this praying mantis since i got back from the bimbia slave dungeons of cameroon oh yes the ancestors are with me you how long did you was that okay how long ago anyone know we had different genome <laughs> I, he's never shown i've never seen him show that uh that that poor bug. I feel bad. I really when he showed it like that, it was up there on the thing trying to. Uh, I said, that "Poor thing." This guy. I see my praying mantis right there. 
Look at that, that praying man. He that praying man's at the top waiting for you to open it and get up out of there. <laughs> Poor slave. That's a praying man to slave. Who want to talk about slave dungeon? You done enslaved that poor baby, that poor baby man. man. <laughs> why are you, why are you going to scam and mantis? Why are you going to do that to that baby mantis like that? Don't do that. That little old, <laughs> that little old box. <laughs> he, he got that little tub from Walmart, put a little thing on top of it. That's, 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 don't do that. <laughs> when I came back from the slave dungeons of Cameroon, there was a praying mantis waiting for me on the door. And then I did my research on praying mantis, and I learned that Cameroon <laughs> has its own species of praying mantis. I said Cameroon had He got a big old fake rock in there. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> what? He said that man just was just living his life. He done took that man away. <laughs> has its own species of praying mantis. I said Cameroon has its own species of praying mantis. Do you know what that means, brothers and sisters? Do you know what that means? That means this praying mantis came back <laughs> with the prince of Pan-Africanism. This praying mantis came back with me <laughs> love from movie. the slave dungeons of Bimbia, crossed the Atlantic <laughs> Ocean, and met me. That's so he's crazy. Transatlantic mantis slave trade. <laughs> At my house, I said the ancestors are with us right now, brothers and sisters. I yeah, had this praying mantis there. since I got back from the Bimbia slave dungeons of Cameroon. Oh yes, when, when he went the, to the ancestors Bimbia are with me. You better find yours because I got mine. You better what? find yours because I got mine. Killers of the flower moon. All right, that's enough, boy. He be tripping. <laughs> Thanks, Dion. Boy, wow. You got a black owned clothing brand. Send me some para so I can wear it on my live. Like here, Philly boys. Philly boys right here. You got some paraphernalia. You can mail that to me. P.O. Box 6872, <laughs> Philadelphia. You got some paraphernalia. You can mail that to me. P.O. Box 6872, Mantis Philadelphia. Matter, you got some paraphernalia. Go ahead and mail me some paraphernalia. 215, excuse me. P.O. Box 6872, yeah, he just, he just Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 19132, brothers and sisters. I got this mantis. On top of mountain. Have a pleasant drive. Huh? Melanin drip. Look at them buildings. Melanin drip. Look at the sun. Where the sun at? It's getting cold out there. Hey, 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 sweetheart. Yes. Who dog be doodooing on my, on my, on my grass? That ain't you, baby. No. You sure? Cause I keep finding piles of doggy dookie all over the school campus. No, he be peeing by your tree right here. He be peeing by the tree. Why you letting him pee on the school, on the school tree? Stop. You can't stop him. Uh -huh. Okay, baby. <laughs> What in the world? <laughs> he, he is. He's wild. All right, let me let this go. He's like, we got to huh? find out what dog keep doodling on the school campus because somebody do some research. We need some research. Somebody dog keeps shitting on our campus. Here we go with this. So this is just the same thing over and over again. I'm getting again. tired of it. Can somebody find out whose dog too, keeps shitting on the Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, RBG, International Leadership Academy for Pan-African Excellence. Stop letting your dog shit on our school. Brothers and sisters, please, can we get it together? Brothers and sisters, can we please get it together? <sighs> This is your first Dr. Umar live? Are you kidding me? This is your first Dr. Umar live? 
Where do you live? Where have you been? Do you not know who I am? Boy, you wild. Uh, how are we doing on likes, everybody? Let me know. Is this not why you are here? Who are you? Where have you been? Where do you live? Do you not know why we are here? Do you not know who I Was be? It Somebody hit in my step. Was it you? Brothers and sisters. Brothers yeah, and sisters. Mad. Then he gets right What color y'all want to paint the classrooms, brothers and sisters? Here we go. What we'll color y'all want to paint the classrooms, brothers and this sisters? This is the same. Ain't nothing changing. Baltimore, Maryland, Friday, November the 10th. Nat Turner Land, Saturday, November the 11th. Chicago, Illinois, Tuesday, November the 16th. Excuse me. Tuesday, trash. Brown and what, Sister Shan, 1244? There's going to be two colors in each classroom. You got to give me the con Somebody said gray and green. That sounds like that's for elders. But no, gray and green could be Ogun. Gray. Oh, cool. The gray could be for the metal. Ogun power. Everybody, Ogun so power. I got to hop off the live, but I'm going to come back because we got to finish going over. A couple more the white like kids that, who uh, did the same thing Brendan Depper did and didn't go to school miss pac-man well look at the melanin drip the old school miss Ms. pac-man Pac -Man. we're gonna about? have a game room we're gonna have a parent and visitor lounge we're gonna have a game room what should be in the game room y'all can y'all tell me what y'all want in the game room i'm gonna tell you right now miss pac-man will be in the game room what in the lore what miss pac-man we were just talking about vintage games that I used to play when I was like 13, 14, 15. Miss Pac-Man, it was out like five years before that. He talked about they're going to have Miss Pac-Man. They your kids ain't playing on Miss Pac-Man. You better put some Call of Duty or something. I'll be playing Starfield on the Xbox X. Umar, listen, if you serious, I I'll donate it to you. My kids ain't going to like it, but I'll, I'll donate it to you for the kids so they won't have to play Miss Pac-Man. I got the game passes. There's a gang of games on. I only play the Starfield, but they got all kind of got Tekken or Tekken or what's the new one? The Mortal Moon Mortal Kombat's on there. They got that one driving game that people like playing. They got the, all kind of stuff on there. You talking about Miss Pac Man? And Pitfall. <laughs> and Frogger. Remember Frogger? Yeah, Fortnite. He really is. He, he's so far but Yeah, Tekken, that was, yeah. <laughs> Rastroid, yeah, that was a great one, too. Miss Pac-Man, the old school Miss Pac-Man will, look at the melanin drip. The old school Miss Pac-Man will be in the game room. I'm telling you that right now. Because I'm playing Miss Pac-Man every day to <laughs> unwind. I need a big Miss Pac-Man. Pac I love that game. Who remember the Miss Pac-Man? Who remember the Miss Pac-Man back? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yep, oh, yes. There's going to be a Miss Pac-Man video game. We're going to have a pool table. What else y'all want in the game room, family? What else y'all want in the game room, family? None about ladies, what color do y'all want my office, ladies? I'm talking Here to the queens go. right now. Here Beta males, testosterone shots is on the way. What color should my office be, ladies? What color should my office be, ladies? What yeah, color Neil should my great. office be, ladies? Yeah, my, my what color y'all want my office? What kind of couch? There was another thing that came out, though, too. No, I don't think he had Neo Geo. Someone had, maybe he did, but there was another thing that came out that was, it, it just didn't take off, but the graphics were way better than Nintendo, and the games were, they didn't have a lot of games. The, the graphics were way better. Was it Turbo Graphics? I think that's what it was called. No, yeah, I think that was what it. Let me go look it up. But I remember he had that. That kid, that the music sounded great too. The audio quality was great. I, that's something I noticed too. We're going to get in there, ladies. We need a graphic. nice soft couch. We need a nice soft couch, ladies. What color is my office? See, see, I told. Remember, I said it earlier to the person that was asking. This is what I mean. This all this provides more proof of what I'm saying because what I'm saying is true. And Umar's intent. It's about uh, sexually exploiting black women. That's why he's always bringing up his his office. One time, and I can pull it up, he said he wants a sexy office. That's his words. And he wants the women to come and decorate and blah, blah, blah. But then now he said, we need a nice, soft couch. For what? What are you talking about? Is that what? I thought this was supposed to be for children. Is that helping children? No, this is in his mind, the truth coming, even though it's kind of, uh, it's indirectly stated, but his intent is clear.
because he starts talking about what he's not talking about. The context is not a school. The context is uh, my, my black queens. And then he starts talking about his office, which he called a sexy office. Then he talks about how he needs a soft couch. Is that about helping black boys? See, no, it's not about helping black. That's sexual exploit, exploitation of black women. I don't. I've been telling y'all. Yeah, Dreamcast was great too, but that's not the Turbo Graphics was the one I was Turbo Graphics sixteen. My uncle had that, and it just didn't take off. But it has some. The graphics were way beyond uh, Nintendo at that time, and. Uh, the music, I remember the very clearly, distinctly that the, the audio quality and the music itself was was really, really good. Okay, uh, we are. Thank you so much. We got 600 already lit, lit up the, uh, the last one. So thank you all so much. We got 600 likes. Still got 90 to 30 people here. Um, Sega Saturn was good too. Yeah. Um, we're already at, two, let's go 20 more minutes. We'll do a three hour show. And then tomorrow, I'm trying to see if I'm going to go to work tomorrow. Go ahead. I'm supposed to be off tomorrow, but they're they're uh, doing forced overtime. So I got to get in there and do that. I'll figure it out. Um, I'll figure it out tonight. If if we do live stream tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll post the, the live late tonight so that you guys will know. If you guys don't see it by the morning time, then we'll end up doing it on Wednesday. It's going to be like this uh, throughout the rest of the year, too. Yeah, my, my work schedule is crazy. Like even the days, it's the it's just it's crazy. Um, let me finish this video. We're gonna go for twenty more minutes, and then we'll be done with this live stream. Thank you all so much. Here we go. Ladies, what color is the principal's office? Yeah, I could do that. I'm not painting my office black. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Royal purple. What color is the rug? What color is the rug in my office? Leather, you want a leather couch? What color is the leather couch? Tasha Smith, you ain't giving me no colors. Here we go. A red couch? That might be too loud. I don't know about a red couch. Red couch might be, might be too loud. I don't know if we want to do a red couch. What color is the couch? What color are the walls? What color is the carpet in my office? What color is the couch? What color are the walls? What color is the carpet in my office? What color is the couch? What color are the walls? What color is the carpet? Cognac leather. I never even heard of that. I don't even drink it. You talk about some cognac. What the hell is cognac leather? Talk to me, queen. Huh? He about to get in that whip of the head off. Okay, let's get to the next one. Here we go. Fellas, no fellas, only queens. Nobody's going to the beach with me with masculine energy, only queen. Yeah, this was uh, just gives another example of his intent. This is when he was uh, in the Virgin Islands. It's biologically born, beautiful, black, big booty. Peace mm -hmm. and Pan-African is to my St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. St. Croix, I'm in the building. Black August finale. Yeah, my wife, she grew up in St. Croix for, for a while. She also grew up in, uh, where Bob Marley's from? I can't remember. Uh, anyway. Jamaica. St. Croix, I am here. In St. Croix, St. Croix, St. Croix, Jamaica. I want all my U.S. Virgin Islanders to pull up tonight, 7 o'clock. I bet you For the meet and greet. <laughs> pull up tonight, 7 o'clock, for the meet and greet in St. Croix. Up. Pull up tomorrow, 3 o'clock, at the Agricultural Fairgrounds. For the EWF anniversary, brothers and sisters. In the Caribbean. Sunday is a free day. We going beach hopping on Sunday. I'm going to the beach on Sunday. Where the St. Croix Queens at? Who going to the beach with Papa? Who going to the this beach with Black Big Boy? Papa on Sunday? That's all I want to know. Who going to the beach with Big Papa on Sunday? That's all I want to know. Oh, it's near it's Pan Africanism a parish. Is Garveyism a get back? FDMG renovations is done. FDMG community grand opening coming soon. I'm sweating because y'all be sweating me. I'm sweating because y'all be sweating me, brothers and sisters. I'm in the Caribbean Sea right now. I'm in the Caribbean Sea right now. Yeah, St. Croix is not too far. I'm in the Jamaica. Caribbean Sea right now, brothers and sisters. I didn't even realize Jamaica is I'm sweating because y'all be sweating me. I'm tripping. Meet and greet I'm tonight, 7 o'clock. We got Haiti right Tomorrow, here. Tomorrow, outdoors, Ethiopian Nicole, World Federation Montserrat. anniversary celebration, three o'clock. Pull up. Barbados. It ain't too late to fly in Texas. Canada. It ain't too late to fly in Haiti. It ain't too late to fly in Puerto Rico. It ain't too late to fly in Bermuda. It ain't too late to fly what? in Florida. 
It ain't too late to fly in New York. It ain't too late no, to fly in Los Angeles. Something. Three o'clock tomorrow, Agricultural Fairgrounds, St. Croix. <laughs> oh, maybe he is. Ethiopian World Federation Did he say Celebration. He was at the, on the, on King Kong line? Consciousness Keynote. King Kong Consciousness Keynote. We call it the 4K. Whenever I get on the microphone, we call it the 4K. Hashtag the 4K. <laughs> King Kong Consciousness Keynote. Hashtag the 4K. It's hot out there. St. Croix, this is my first visit in two years. I actually like the heat. I like the heat better than the cold. It's been a long 24 months, St. Croix. We got a lot to talk about tomorrow. You always got to say It's months. been a long 24 months, St. Croix. We got a lot to talk about tomorrow. It's been a long 24 <laughs> months, St. Croix. We got a lot to talk about tomorrow. If you need to reach me, hit the text 215 989 I agree with this. I totally, but see, he can't help himself. He just can't help himself talking about, but that really, it should just be private, you know, but back years ago he didn't do this he, he did not do this you guys go back and watch old umar he didn't behave like this and talking cookies and all this stuff it's just didn't do it. he didn't do it it's just these days he's so i don't even know what the word is yeah dude that was months he loves he loves saying months hit the text message 215-989-9858 hit the text message 215-989-9985k I'm also working on a King Kong Consciousness Conference. I'm also working on a King Kong Consciousness Conference. I'm also working on a he just making this King up. Kong Consciousness Conference. We got the King Kong Consciousness Keynote. He tripped. King Kong Consciousness Cookies. King Kong Consciousness Campus. What is wrong with him? Anyone, what is going on right here? Why does he say, Samara, why does he say uh, he's going to have a conference and he's going to say, what? And then he say King Kong consciousness cookies. Does anyone get, is anybody? Keynote. King Kong Kong. King Kong consciousness cookies. King Kong Consciousness Campus. King Kong Consciousness Cruise. He's coming up. Conscious Singles Convention coming up. Conscious Singles Convention coming up. Stop worrying about me and Suki Hana. That's none of your business. Stop worrying about me and Suki Hana. That's none of your business. Stop worrying about me and Suki Hana. That's none of your business. We live and direct St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. We live and direct St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. He hot out there. Seven o'clock tonight, meet and greet. Three o'clock tomorrow, agricultural fairgrounds. Yeah, you're, fairgrounds you're absolutely heat. right, Cheryl. Saying, well, Umar hasn't saved, built, or gotten anything. And we can go step by step. He hasn't saved anybody. Okay, He may target parents who are struggling or are in dire straits. Or at least they think that they're in dire straits and need someone to come and save their black boy or black girl for that matter. But he hasn't saved anybody. In fact, I don't think anyone can save anybody. OK, you can talk to somebody and hope, help give them some advice or give them some encouragement, but they're going to have to save themselves at, at some point. They're going it's, it's up to them. They're going to have to make the change. So he ain't saved nobody. He ain't built nothing either. He purchased these abandoned buildings, but that's not building. Building, you have to have some hammer and nails. Have you ever seen Umar with hammer and nails? You have to have some drywall. You ever see him putting up any drywall? You ain't seen none of that. You got to have framing. You see Umar do any framing? You got to have a foundation. You see him putting down the cement for any of that? No, foundational cement. No, he ain't done none of that. He's built nothing. And gotten it. Well, Cheryl Sagamore, he has got he has gotten a lot of money. We can say that. <laughs> we can say that. But he ain't got nothing done of significance based on what he said he was going to do with the money. Again, like I said, if you're going to ask people for money, okay, as long as you do what you said you was going to do. But don't take money from people and then you don't do what you say you're going to do, which was to open up a school for black boys. And initially it was a college campus of, with a boarding school. Now it's these trap bandits over five years later almost five years, and he only just trying to open up a gym and, and a small school, and there's still dr the drop ceiling tiles from drops across the kitchen is all falling all down. I got blowed off. 
You're right. He ain't saying nobody ain't built nothing, ain't got nothing but got more money to get to, to trick off. Thanks, Cheryl Sackboy for Zoom Chat. And thanks, uh uh Dib Sports and East B and Dion. D Skivelli says he changed uh, he on a drug out ride and he don't think we <laughs> this is the thing with Umar though. There are times where he seems as if he's kind of coherent. Where it's kind of like he he's kind of making sense and you can follow like a stream of logic almost. But then there's other times where you're like, what is he talking about? It reminds me uh these these Cavelli is when he was talking about black to black Memphis and he started fading out like that. OK, obviously this guy, he, he you know, he didn't turn that heat down. But in this video where he starts talking about uh, a conference and then a King Kong conference, a King Kong keynote, then he says King Kong consciousness cookies. What? What are you talking about? And he just he just don't seem like he well, that's that turn of the heat down. I've been trying to tell I try not to talk about that as much, but I've been telling people that for a long time. But it is what it is. And see, if you grew up around it, or you've been around, I grew up around it, I know what it is, you know, and it is what it is. It just it is. Thank you, uh, D Skip for Super Chat. Here in St. Croix, US Virgin Islands. Three o'clock pull up season. Yes, sir. Dr. Umar, peace, good brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. I'm speaking tomorrow. Agricultural Fairground, 3 o'clock. Come on through. Yes, sir. It's the Ethiopian World Federation celebration. Appreciate that, King. Appreciate that. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel you, King. Pull up tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right. Pull up. It's King Kong, St. Croix. I hope my St. Thomas Africans pulling up tomorrow pulling up tonight who going to the beach sunday i need a beach team who going to the beach yeah thanks a lady no yeah, fellas else, no fellas hit only like, queens hit it. Appreciate it. we all appreciate it nobody's going to the beach with me the with only, masculine energy only uh the only work Umar has done is pick up trash with his bare hands which is true this is all facts so i can pull up the receipts number two wipe the backboard this is true because zora was up there with him remember and number three shovel uh eight <laughs> An eighth of an inch of a snow. I remember that too because he was tap dancing at the same time. Y'all remember that? These are all facts. I can actually pull up the receipts on each one of these. Him picking up trash with his bare hands. I think that's when he said run them donations. Was that in that video? Number two, when he was wiping the backboard, that's when, when Zora was up in there. That turned into a whole hot mess. Y'all remember that one? That was a hot mess. <laughs> and then, of course, the shovel. He was shoveling snow out there. Then he started dancing. Looked like, I don't know what kind of dance. Looked like he was doing that the copper weather or something. I don't know. Put the Spanish, you know, the Spanish dance. They be doing it. They're doing like that. That doesn't look like he's doing. But this is all factual. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Andriana. Here we go. Let's get, we got to finish this up. Africanism, peace and pan-Africanism. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Already sold oh, wait, out this Africans. Right here. Wait, I thought we already watched that one. Hold on. Biologically born beautiful black big booty i'm sorry let me take that back it's consciousness over cookies. see he can't help himself i told y'all it's politics over punani it's revolution over romance yeah i know it, it could it's institutions hilarious. over intimacy any sisters want to go to the beach for a nice platonic dip any sisters want to go to the beach in saint croix sunday for a nice platonic dip we're my Cameroonian Africans. I'm pulling up in Cameroon, September 21st to the 25th. We're my Cameroonian Africans. I'm pulling up, no fellas. I don't need no fellas at the beach. What I need fellas at the beach for? I need butter, almond, butter. Here we go again. Told y'all. It says Zora. <laughs> it's Zora, not Zora. Joshua is Zora, not Zora. This is Zora's long lost cousin. <laughs> Zora, Zora was in there wearing that Liu Kang. <laughs> She showed us. <laughs> she was looking hot to trot. Let <laughs> me stop. I'm trying not to be goofing off. She was looking hot to trot, family. <laughs> Umar went in. That was one of his rants. Was all top five rants. He went in on her. Was just, oh man. I said, man, I feel so bad for her. She actually sent me a message too, real nice. She was like, I just saw the video with you with me in the gym, and I watched your video, and it was cringe. <laughs> I said, yeah, for you. And I'm sure it was. Queen, no, I didn't respond back. Here we go. Pecan at the beach. I need fudge. I need chocolate. I need African vanilla, African lemonade. I need nutmeg. I need cinnamon. I need sweet brown sugar. I don't need, I need pistachio. I need sweet peanut butter. I don't need, I need buttercream. I don't need no fellas at the beach. He said buttercream. 
he wants a better butter queen cookie. Okay. Nothing but queens with the king. <laughs> Any of my American African sisters want to fly in for the beach Sunday, a private so right dip in the water. Lay back and let me read some philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey to you on the beach. Just lay back and chill, my sister, and let me read. That's nice and romantic. <laughs> That's nice and romantic. Huh? Good, good. Good girl, Jack Queens, Super Queens, is that romantic? I'm going to read you the life and times of Marcus Garvey on the beat, family. This is, right. Some philosophy and opinions of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey to you on the beach while we bathe under the black August sun, brothers and sisters. Bathe? Oh, yeah. You mean bask? Freudian slip? Does he mean bask? No, we're going to bathe. See, his mind, boy. He, oh, he out there. Pist yeah, no, he loved it, pistachio. Here we go. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I need, I oh, need. Oh, yes, brothers and sisters. I need. <laughs> oh, yes. Ain't no thirst over here, back. King. The, I, the menu stay filled over here, my brother. Unlike you. Unlike you, the menu stay filled over here. I got everything on the menu. Full-figured fudge to slim, thick butter pecan. I got everything on the menu from five-five thick in the thighs, nutmeg to a five-nine slim, thick peanut butter. The whole menu full. I got a buffet waiting, brother. You, you understand? This King Kong you talking to? This King Kong. But we here. Let's get focused. Let's get focused. Focus. <laughs> you do be saying that Let's all the time. Let's get focused, brothers and sisters. I need. I need. I need. Let's get focused. Yeah, that's get the cash app for black. No, 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 no. Seriously, that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to explain. This ain't got nothing to do with helping black boys. The person earlier. This is exactly what I'm talking about. See, it proves. I haven't seen these videos, uh, but what I was talking about earlier, where I was showing how Umar's not interested in helping black boys. He's really interested in getting money, and getting sex. Well, listen, as we're watching these other videos, there it's proving my point. And, and we have a whole catalog we can go back where Umar is talking all this sexually explicit. None of this should be taking place because if you're supposed to be a school principal, you shouldn't be talking like this, period. Now, privately, okay, that's your business. But publicly, you shouldn't be talking like this. You're supposed to be handling business and opening up a school. But who would sit in their right mind, what black parent or parent, period, would send their child to a school, even though it doesn't exist, where the principal is online talking all this sexually explicit talk? I mean, that's a red flag anyway, right? Yeah, he sure is. August, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app for Black August, dollar sign FDMG school. Yeah, he Hit does. Hit the cash Every app for Black August. Every time. I got to stop playing these games, man. Stop playing these games, it's King Kong. It's King Kong, it's going down. Three days of King Kong in St. Croix. Three. Why well, now we got over a thousand people? I don't get it, y'all, Y'all, it's like, I, I just don't get it. It's, it was like 800, now we had a thousand. I thought people were gonna be leaving and going to bed. Nights, is there a club? I'm pulling up at the St. Croix Club. If you live in St. Croix, or do I gotta take the ferry to St. Thomas? Do I gotta take the ferry to St. John? Do I got to take a boat to Haiti, a boat to Dominican Republic, a boat to the Bahamas, a boat to Barbados? He don't know what he done. A boat. I'm going clubbing tonight. Where the club at, family? You ain't going I'm no pulling club. up tonight. Where is the club like? He already said he can't dance. What are you talking about? St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John. Where is the club life? Club life. We got the meet and greet at 7. We're going to hit the club. Tomorrow, we got EWF celebration. Sunday we hitting the beach. I need a beach partner for Sunday. I need a beach partner for Sunday. Here we go again. Of course I eat. I'm Big Papa. Ah, what up, beloved? <laughs> How's it going? Good to see you, man. It's been two years. <laughs> yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ross Popo. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I. 
Two years, huh? Two years, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> There it is. Ah, uh, I didn't even know that was you, woman. How you sit next to me? I, I didn't even look. I'm th oh man, Sister Rebecca, what's good? Oh man. Yeah, I love that accent. The the accent from the, out there. My wife, she knows how to do it because she grew up out there, but she don't like doing it when around me for some reason. I don't know why, because it's exactly making my flag. I was like, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, what y'all want to do? Y'all want to get into one more? We 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 can we got time. I don't I don't mind. Sunday. Let me see something. Else. We already did this one. Oh, we just did this one. Let me see, let me just see how long this other one is. Y'all let me know what y'all want to do. Because I don't I don't mind. Uh, let me see how long this one is real quick. I thought we already covered this one though. Did we already cover this one? Yeah, this one's only 11 minutes. Let me see. Oh, no, this is the one I want to get to. We got to get to this one today. It's only 11 minutes. So this is the one I want to get in, into today. This is Umar's big announcement. Okay, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to go. Let's go. Thank you all so much for, for tuning on and hanging in there. We still got, well, it done went down to, to like 870. We just had 1,000. I think this thing's tripping. All right, so this is the bit I want to get to because this is the big announcement that proves that the Cook Press Chat, you guys are no longer undefeated. Let's go into it. Pan-Africanism, peace and pan-Africanism. Peace and pan-Africanism, peace and pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, King Kong Consciousness, Dr. Umar, Ifa Tunde. I'm live and direct. That's Your right. school, Let's my go. school, our school, the incomparable, the immeasurable, the royal, the grand, hey, the mighty, Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey, RBG, International Leadership Academy for Pan-African <laughs> Excellence. I just ate my food, brothers and sisters, from the Chef Barbie. I just had my lunch from yeah. Black Chef Barbie. No, I, I know sisters. what you mean. Yeah. I just had well, the lunch wow. from Black my Chef Barbie. You know how to talk when she talking. I, I don't know what it is about that. I was be like, mm. <laughs> I can't understand the words she say, but I will be like, mm. <laughs> I mean, you ever make that sound that what? But you do. Mm. <laughs> He can not even say that. Barbie, I had the colossal lobster. I had the uh, greens with the cabbage. I had the mac, <laughs> the, the, the baked goo. He said greens with the cabbage. The mac brothers and sisters, I had a big pop of lunch. It was King Kong delicious. I said the lunch from Chef Barbie was King Kong delicious. I said the lunch from Chef Barbie was King Kong delicious. Listen, <laughs> I got a special listen. announcement for my Baltimore Africans. I got a special announcement. Y'all know the bookstore sold out, so this is what we're going to do. We're doing a meet and greet around the corner from the bookstore. Baltimore, <laughs> listen to me, Baltimore. This Mega. is brand oh, yeah. new. I need my Baltimore Africans to listen. You will get a chance to see the Prince of Pan-Africanism tonight. From okay. It's so gloomy up there. Five to seven, I'm going to do the lecture at the Urban Reads bookstore. At seven o'clock, we're going around the corner. To the Jerk Garden in the Terra Cafe. Around the corner. At 7 until 10, I will be at the Jerk Garden in the Terra Cafe. Yeah, because he 101 he, he, East he, he 25th, hungry. Baltimore, Maryland. 101 East 25th, Baltimore, Maryland. 101 East 25th, Baltimore, Maryland. Y'all understand me? 101 <laughs> East 25th Street, Terra Cafe. <laughs> Terra Cafe, yeah, the, the Jerk Alley Garden, family. and Terra Cafe, Baltimore, <laughs> Maryland. That's what book signing, pictures, book signing, Q and A, and pictures, Q and A, book signing, and pictures in Baltimore tonight, seven to ten at the Terra Cafe. Why is he yelling? Cafe, one hundred one East Twenty Fifth. Urban Reads Bookstore will be the lecture. That's so. Yeah, it's cold out there. I feel bad for him, y'all. I really do. I, I think something happened with the mama, though. I really do. I don't think he's living with her anymore. Sold out. Urban Reads Bookstore will be the lecture. Yeah, that's what that's I was saying. Out. I don't understand Urban why Reed's he's Urban Reads Bookstore will be the call. lecture from 5 to 7. That's sold out. <laughs> After the lecture, <laughs> we're going dad. around the corner. After the lecture at the no, Urban Reads Bookstore tonight, November the 10th, Black Baltimore, Frederick Douglass City. Frederick Douglass City. Once we I don't know why I feel like we've already watched this video. Did we already watch this? Hit the one. 
I don't know. Maybe it's just because he keeps going up there doing this. I'm getting this all the same now. We done with the lecture at the <laughs> Urban <laughs> Reeves bookstore at Frederick Douglass City from five until seven. We going around the corner, brothers and sisters, to the Terra Cafe. The address to the Terra Cafe where I will be for Q&A, pictures and book signing at the Terra Cafe tonight in Baltimore from seven until ten. Urban Reads Bookstore is 5 until 7. The lecture, Q&A, pictures and books, 7 to 10 at the Terra Cafe. One you know, if it's renovated, why is he out here in the cold like this? And it gets cold out there in Wilmington. It's not renovated. 101 East 25th. Yeah, he 101 is. East 25th. 101 yeah, no, East 25th. What it is. Terra Cafe, 7 to 10 meet yeah. and greet book signing yeah but bridget the thing is that he's it, it's he's it's virtual he's on his phone and there's people who are going to be there to see him and he, he should be the center of attention because that's all that they're going to see I, I, he just be yelling i don't urban reads bookstore five to yeah. seven for the lecture just, does everybody in the understand? middle of the street just scream does everybody in baltimore understand do all my maryland africans understand do all my DMV <laughs> said he's Africans he's understand? He's the lecture at Urban Reads Bookstore 5 to 7. The meet and it's greet exactly. books. Exactly. That's exactly. The HVAC. He said H and all. It ain't working. I've been telling people. I already told people. You ain't going to be outside in 4 degree weather if the HVAC is working. Signing in pictures at the Terra Cafe from 7 to 10 tonight. 101 East 25th in Baltimore. Fred Hampton Gum Club is on my security tonight. Fred Hampton gun. Yeah, it's 40 degrees out there. 40 degrees out there right now. The high is 53, low of 40. Yeah, that's well, at least at 12, at 12 a.m. is, yeah. The club so is on my security freezing. tonight. Fred Hampton gun club is on the security tonight, brothers and sisters. I'm at FDMG getting ready. Oh, yes. Let me show y'all something. Yeah, the low for Tuesday is 30, Wednesday 34, Thursday 41, Friday 45, uh, Saturday 33, and then it drops on Sunday to 29 with a high of 48. Yeah. Shout out to Chef Barbie for that colossal lobster. Shout out to Chef Barbie for the colossal lobster. Yeah, he, he's not vegan. Shout he's out to Chef the, Barbie again, he, for the colossal lobster. Of stuff that's not the, true. The, 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 the stuffed cornbread with the mac. Stuffed cornbread. That sounds good. Though. I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, he's not vegan. That's just Umar. He's he's said so many different things. Anyway, look at this boy. This guy. Can you imagine? Look at him. So sad. I'm sunk so low. Still struggling. And cheese. Look what somebody did. Somebody got me a sign. We got a new sign, brothers and sisters. And this right here is the proof that this school is opening. And FMG, you got or excuse, FMG is opening. Uh, it's only a matter of time. And I was wrong. Quick course chat, y'all wrong. And you guys are no longer undefeated. You guys have now been defeated. That's the point of this video tonight. This this is the proof right here that FMG is coming. Okay, here we go. It's almost done. We got a new sign. Notice pet owners required to lease your pets and clean up. Pet feces. Who got this put in by the city? Thank you for my FDMG supporters. Who got this sign put in by the city? Thank you to my FDMG supporters. Who got this sign put in by the city of Wilmington, Delaware? Somebody must have heard me on the last live ask that sister if her dog was messing on our property. Somebody must have heard me ask that sister on the last live whether her dog was messing on the pro whoever called the city and asked them to put these signs up, we've been here for four and a half years. These signs have never been here. We've been here for four and a half years. These signs never been here. So whoever asked the city of Wilmington to put these signs up, I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for that. Whoever asked the city of Wilmington to put these signs up, I want to thank you for that. Notice pet owners, <laughs> you are required. It is bent. I just noticed that. The sign's all bent. It's probably been here the whole time. He just never saw it. He didn't notice it. To lease your pets and...
I mean, the buildings are abandoned. What difference does it matter? I mean, does it make the city? Well, the city is just going to come out of these board of buildings. Let me go ahead and put these signs up here for what? Clean up after the pet feces. Thank you to whoever did that. We got to take care of our school, brother. You don't do sisters. nothing. You don't do. We got to take care of our nothing. school, bro. We getting ready for the you grand open. Nothing. Nothing. Whether it's going to be Black History Month or or, or Spring Fling in April. Ifa Tunde Avenue, <laughs> Doctor Papa Boulevard. Who are always talking about Duke? Y'all don't want to get it. Just when we please stop. I'm just saying that it's not necessary. Let the Bart principal. Look at this. Look at the background. I wouldn't even walk past this stuff. Pan Africanism Park. It remind me of that game with the zombies in it from back in the day. Way, you know how we do, family. You know how we do, family. <laughs> It's freedom yeah. for everybody or freedom for nobody. It's freedom for everybody or it's freedom for nobody. Tomorrow, who coming in that Turner land? Peace, brother. Tomorrow, we'll who coming in that Turner land, y'all? <laughs> NatTurnerLibrary.com. <laughs> who going to come? You have one at your bakery? What kind of things do you bake? Let's get a break from Ubar. What, what kind of uh, things do you bake? <laughs> Shoot. I'm hungry myself. Let me go. Let me go look up this sign. What, what would be called? Uh, do not poop. <laughs> they do got them on here. They got different ones. They got one for twenty two dollars. One for twelve ninety nine. Man, they do have them on Amazon. I'm surprised by that. <laughs> you ever look at a dog while it's pooping? They don't like that. <laughs> they don't like it. If, if, if you're looking back at because they want privacy. <laughs> if, you look, if you look at them while they're doing it, they get very uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm serious. All right, thanks, old son. <laughs> she said, she said, she said eleven sixty. <laughs> exactly. Huh? They do got them on Amazon though, <laughs> but that one's bent. <laughs> so, so. So who knows? Ain't no telling where that side came from. It might have been Earl from around the way. Here we go. I'm celebrating Nat Turner <laughs> tomorrow in Emporia, Virginia. <laughs> who coming to celebrate Nat Turner tomorrow? Here who coming go. to celebrate? Look at this. All these people look like hobbits. <laughs> Little black hobbits. I don't get it. All right? Look at uh, Marcus Garvey's legs are shorter than his his head. I don't. Anyway. This is this right here. The pro <laughs> Captain Crunch in the back. Prophet Nat Turner. Who coming to celebrate that man? Nat Turner looked like Miles Davis. I don't know. <laughs> and right there, the greatest revolutionary on America. Who coming to celebrate the prophet? Right there. Who coming to celebrate the prophet Nat Turner tomorrow? Who coming to celebrate the prophet Nat Turner this tomorrow mural, mural in Emporia, boy. Virginia, brothers and sisters? That's scary. Who coming to celebrate the prophet Nat Turner tomorrow? You need the address for tomorrow? <laughs> Emporia, 111 West Atlantic Street. You got black Oompa Loompas back here. <laughs> you got black Oompa Loompas back here. I don't know. Rev Jerry, Reverend Jerry, just up and says, I guess I have to make another trip up the street to see what's going on. There's no activity there ever. He literally shows up to make videos. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You live out there. I, I've never seen Umar do one thing out there. I'm, no, it's been almost five years. What about Thanksgiving? Let's get some turkeys out there for the people. Okay. You know, spend, spend uh, $2,000 on turkeys and just hand them out to the people. How about a book, uh, a backpack drive for the kids? You know, buy buy fifty backpacks. I don't even know. It was you can get them get them for what thirty bucks each. Okay, it's, it's not too expensive, and pass them out to the kids right before school starts. Christmas roll around. Have some uh, some toys, wrap toys for the kids, girls and boys. Have them get in the line and pass out uh, these gifts to the kids. I mean, we go on and on things that he could have done, uh, Reverend Jerry Juice, uh, over the last five years. It wouldn't have been expensive, but at least it would do something, you know, but that's not what, what he's done. You know, what he's done is uh, show up there to show these abandoned buildings and then ask for money. That's it. That's the only reason why he goes up there is to is to ask for money because ain't nothing else going on up there.
I wonder if you've ever seen, have you ever seen uh, licensed inspectors come up there? Have you ever seen uh, licensed electricians come up there or licensed plumbers come up there? You know, because they would be parked out there and their truck would be there out there the whole day and it would have their company name on there. So you, you're not going to, he only goes up there when he, he wants to get money out of people and he uses it as a backdrop like he's making progress and the school is about to open next week, next on Monday. Uh, and then he starts to ask for cash out. But he's been doing this now for 13 years. The difference is that in 2019, at least he had something he can show behind him. And that got people riled up. It's not the same as it used to be, though, because people really were really excited in February of 2019. They were sending money. He was getting a lot of money coming in after that. But after four and a half years, almost five years, people ain't, they ain't buying into that. Like, no, nah, this there ain't nothing going on up there. And to this day, ain't nothing going on up there. So I think for Super Chat, Reverend Jerry, and Reverend Jerry just lives out there. He did the video where he walked around and showed the, the conditions of the exterior, and it looked deplorable. Uh, mold all over the place. Uh, thanks for Super Chat. Uh, and then Whole Southern Cook says, uh, I bake pound cakes, cookies, French pastries, and I'm a French good Oh, et cetera. And yes, cookies. Yeah. Well, yeah that's awesome. I'm hungry, too. I, you know, French pastries. I don't even know what that is. Let me look it up. Is that a croissant? That's what that is. Huh? French, French pastries. Uh, 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 Lamaris assorted pastry sampler, a uh, uh, Breedor Fran uh, Brider France, French uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, desert bar macaroons. There's 10 pastries that you French pastries that you should know. They look good, though. Yeah, they, they, they look real good. I'm hungry, though. That's why. Uh, uh, Prof, Prophet Tiroli, that looks pretty good. Macaroons, I didn't know that was French. Macaroons are good. I, shoot, I wouldn't mind having them right now. Uh, Running Goose, Geesey, something like that. My French is on, it's great, huh? Uh, 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 Pan Owl Chocolate, that's like, I don't know. Melee Frulay, Melee Frulay. Eclairs. I know what an eclair is. I know what because chocolate eclair is back in the day. I just love those. Uh, a, a Madeline. I, I've had that before. Those are good. Uh, Canelli. Okay. And, and a coin Amon. And, and a Chalquette. Those look good. I like this. That was real good. That was my French. Is it good? <laughs> All right. All right. Let's finish up right here. We're going we're almost done. It's about about three more minutes. We'll be done for tonight. Thank y'all again for tuning on in. All all y'all two to seven. Appreciate y'all. One 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 West Atlantic Street in Emporia, Virginia. Two to seven. One 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 West Atlantic Street, Atlantic Street in Emporia, Virginia. I'm not inboxing oh, you. Stop being lazy. That is. I'm not. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. My wife probably does because they'd be watching. Uh, yeah, I'm hungry. I ain't gonna lie. I'm hungry right now. Um, my wife and, and uh, one of my daughters. Uh, all of them watch it, but my wife and one of my daughters, they be watching those shows. And she likes those British shows with uh because they got this one with this black lady on there. She's real cute too. Um uh, and they have them come, it's like one of them standard shows. They have them come on and then they do these bake con uh, contests. Um, she's a bigger woman. Uh, they have these bake contests, and then if you don't do well, they have these judges and they'll kick you off, you know, like that kind of thing. But but uh they watch that all the time. It's funny too. I like it. Doing no extra work. I'm telling you right now, ninja. I'm not inboxing you. What's wrong with you? I'm not inboxing your lazy ass. I'm telling you the information. Write it down. Who coming to celebrate Nat Turner? John yeah, Jock Desolate. Frederick Douglass. Marcus Garvey. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's a Fred. Hit the cash app, dollar sign now, FDMG school. Hit yeah, but it's it's a black lady, though. And she, uh, see how you know I was saying, uh, Reverend Jerry Juice, he goes up here to, to start asking for cash app. That's what this is about. But the lady on that show, uh, She's uh, she has a British accent. You guys know what I'm talking about. She's a, she's a black woman. She's kind of big too. She's she's real good. I think she's cash cute. app dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal PayPal dot <laughs> yeah, that's what he's FDMG saying. Academy. <laughs> Hit the PayPal PayPal dot me slash FDMG Academy brothers and sisters. <laughs> it is. Look that rental. Oh, that looks like it was a good game. Did the Lakers play tonight or was that last night? I don't even know. Who pulling up tonight at the Terra Cafe? 
Who pulling up in Baltimore tonight for the meet and greet at the Terror Cafe? Fred Hampton Gun Club is on my guard. Oh, that's what it's called? Who pulling great, up tonight yeah, at yeah. the Terror Cafe? My, my wife, she watches it. Uh, I'm almost done too, baby. Uh, this, this is like literally like two more minutes left of this video. Uh, but it's called the Great Brit British Baking Show. She watched it. It's funny. I thought it was hilarious. Cafe. They had this one lady on there that was, was deaf. And they had, she could, she, and she was signing and stuff. And she did really good. Who pulling up tonight at the Terra Cafe? 101 East 25th in Baltimore, 7 to 10. 101 East 25th and in Baltimore, 7 show. to 10. Anyway. 101 East it's 25th in Baltimore, 7 to 10. Urban Reed's bookstore is already sold out, Africans. They won't stay in high tune to my wife. Yeah, Umar, he don't work. He ain't got time for that. <laughs> he too busy up there. Don't tell me to stop repeating myself. Do you want me to block you? Do there you want to go to the block party? Don't tell me what the, this is my page. This is my page. You don't like it? Get off it. This is my page, brothers and sisters. This is my page. You know, I'm about to get to 70,000 subscribers. I just looked over here just now. When I get to 70,000, I'm going to quit. <laughs> oh, quit YouTube. I was uh, a compliment. I'm coming out with my own beard, my own beard butter. I'm coming beard out with butter. my own beard butter. For my brothers with the beards, I'm coming out with the Big Papa beard collection. I'm coming out with the Big Papa beard collection. Oh, you just be making up stuff, and now you're going to come up with a beard collection. I should grow my beard in so I can order. Oh, yes. It won't get here until the 2053. Oh, yes. I'm coming out with the Big Papa Beard Collection. I'm looking for some sisters to give me a nice original beard. A, a nice original uh, beard recipe with my sister. But I thought you said you're going to make it. You're going to come out with it. Oh, no. But the Black Queens, they're all going to do the work. See, this guy, he's a trip. He sees y'all as resources and nothing else. Nothing else. He can come up with something on the spot that he's going to do, and somehow he transfers it over to you black women. Y'all going to do it. Did y'all catch that? Watch this. Papa Beard Collection. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm coming out with the Big Papa Beard Collection. I'm looking for some sisters to give me a nice original beard. A, a nice original uh, beard recipe. Where my sisters out there? We need a big pop of beard collection. Did anyone catch that? Hit the one. Where my That's shea crazy. butter queens and my olive oil queens and my almond butter queens and all my organic chemists. We need Dr. Papa beard collection. We need the big pop of beard collection. Tell Ricky Rose he ain't the only one. Tell Ricky Rose I'm coming for a spot. Who's Shout that? out Who's to that. Said Ricky Rose. What you talking about? Is a baseball player? Rose. Tell Ricky Rose I'm coming out with the Dr. Papa beard collection. I'm taking over the beard game. I'm taking over the beard game. Oh, yes. Where my chemist at? Where my organic, natural, five, five, thick in the thigh queens who are going to come up? See? He's going to do it, but you're going to do it for him. But then he has to turn it into five, five, thick in the thighs because it's the sexual exploitation part. Now, again, the person who, who made that comment earlier. This is what I'm talking about. He's not here to just who supposedly it appears as if allegedly he's helping black boys. Ain't, ain't no allegedly, ain't so supposed, ain't no he might be. He's not. This is really what this is about. Any way that he can exploit black women, including he's going to come up with his imagination on the spot that he's going to come up with this product, a beard, butter, beard, peel off, whatever it is. And then, then he flips and he says, Y'all going to come up with the recipe for it, you black women. So y'all going to do the work. And then you chemists that will do the chemistry on it, five, five, thick in the thighs. So now it becomes sexualized because that's what this is all about. Y'all really think he's going to come out with a, a, a cream or beer cream or whatever he called it? Butter, cream, butter, hot pockets. I don't know. You think he's going to do that? No, he ain't going to do that. But what he, what he illustrates is what his intent is. To exploit black women. And then he always has to turn it back to the five, five, thick and deck, the, the five, five, thick and the thighs, cookies. I'm taking over the beard game. Oh, yes. Where my chemist at? Where my organic, natural, 
five five thick in the thigh queens who are going to come up with some Dr. Papa beard butter, some beard wash. We also need some Dr. Papa shape. Beard wash, beard butter. Beard butter for the skin. Not beer, beard. I'm sorry. To keep your skin looking as good as mine. Where you at, ladies? I need a whole Dr. Papa beard line. Who going to send me some He wants y'all to do the whole line. He said he was going to do it, but no. Y'all going to do it. Now y'all see? You black women, don't let, don't let no man, don't, 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 just don't do it. He looks like he needs to be a uh, hose down. <laughs> it's too cold for that though. To be honest with the little game channel, it's too cold. For, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't wish that on it. It's too cold. Now they, if they, if they have some warm, hot water, hot fudge water, that's fine. But that, that right there is too cold out there. <laughs> He'd be tripping though. Sometimes I'll be, I'll be like, I just wish he would just calm down and settle down. You know, and then then it's it's what's weird about it is he'll just go from one extreme to, to the next. Like he'll be talking and then some he'll see one little comment and then he goes zero to six hundred. And then he'll calm back down. And then they go for a little while, and then he'll go from talking about a beard line to now he's talking about five, five thick in the thighs. It's, he's he's a trip. He really is. Now thanks for two everyone else too. Thanks for super chats. Cheryl Second Boy says beards over. All right. <laughs> I should have read that before I put it up there. Yeah, that was what we used to say back in the day, knocking the boots. Anybody remember that hit the one? You younger people, you ain't never heard it. Okay, that's what we used to say back in the day, knocking the boots, did you knock the boots? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. I said, what? I think about it now, knocking the boots. That's ancient history. <laughs> younger people are like, what are you talking about? It don't even make sense now that I think about it. That's no different. Back in the day, people used to say rock. Rock, we're going to rock tonight. Rock with me tonight. Who old time say? Yeah, I used to play that in my garage. I had a girlfriend. It was a white girlfriend, too, in the ninth grade. Don't tell Uma. Uh, and after the uh, ninth grade, she moved or went to a different school. This is what Uma was doing. I moved and went to a different school like that. And I didn't see her again. And we didn't change, exchange num phone numbers for some reason. Uh, it's different back then. We didn't have cell phones or anything. Uh, so I would sit inside the garage and I would play Freddie Jackson. And there was a couple of songs that I used to play over and over again. Just be sitting in my garage, reminiscing on the love we had. She was cute too. I, you know, she was cute. I saw a picture of her about five years ago. I said, "Damn, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it is not." I'm just saying, I should say that. I'm joking. I'm just joking. All right. All right, let's get back. Here we go. Samples of what they think should be the Dr. Papa beard line. Oh, yes. For the skin, for the. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to your pop then. He know what it is. Yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah. That's that's real. That's real talk right there. I like that. He, he knew. He's like, yeah. Oh, yes. Brothers and sisters. And then we need some uh some Dr. Papa lock butter. We need some Dr. Papa lock butter. So if you got lock locks, butter. you can keep, you know what I'm saying? You can keep your twisties looking good like mine. So we need beard butter. We need beard wash. We need we need a shea butter, a big pop of shea Close butter. Face. We need the mm -hmm. twisty butter. Oh, yes. Twisty Tell butter. Rose I'm coming for the crown. Who is he talking about? Who's Rose? Somebody tell Ricky Rose I'm coming for the beard butter. Oh, it's Ricky Rose. I thought he said rookie. Crown, brothers and sisters. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG. I sure did. When I was a young whippersnapper, I had nobody crying. I sure did. <laughs> yeah. I didn't discriminate back then, you know, but then when I got older, I started discriminating. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's Rick Ross. Okay. What did Rick Ross do anyway? I don't I don't get it. He's just old. I don't what is it? He must be a rapper. I don't know. I think he's a rapper. I ain't never heard no Rick Raw song. With my Kansas City Africans. Kansas City, I'm going to see you. We got a new location in Kansas City. The response has been overflow. Don't, don't try to criticize because a lot of you in the cookie crust chat, a lot of you men, you you was doing this. Do you have to stuff money crisis yourself? Hit the one. Yeah, I know you ain't going to do it because y'all ain't real like me. See, I'll tell y'all. I, I had the snow bunny cry. I also had a burrito crisis as well. <laughs> I had a salsa cry when I was 11th grade. 
<laughs> when I was sixth grade, I had a hot fudge. When I was in the ninth grade, I had a snow bunny crisis. When I was in eleventh grade, I had me a salsa crisis. And then in the senior twelfth grade, I had a a a a, 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 a mocha almond fudge crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was bunny hopping, family. <laughs> well, at least we got the brothers admitting it. Thank you. See that I don't feel alone. Let's be honest here. Some of you women, some of you, some of you queens, you super queens, y'all have the snow hair crisis. Hit the one. I know you ain't gonna admit it. Some of y'all have it right now. <laughs> Jeremy sitting in the other room wondering why you laughing. <laughs> Honey, what are you, why are you laughing? Oh, I'm I'm just I'm watching Netflix, dear. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I ain't seen one 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 from the Queens. That's he they all need to stop. Okay, come on. <laughs> don't don't be don't don't be fronting as we used to say. Tell the truth, all right? <laughs> no, I ain't never had no Susie Christ. <laughs> I ain't never had no Susie Christ, family. But it but 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 it, it, if I had a time machine, I probably would. <laughs> I might go back in time just to have me a one one Susie crisis, family. Then I come back and tell you all about it. All right. I, I love me some rice. I love me some rice. <laughs> That's my favorite dish. And I ain't playing. I love me some rice. I told my wife one time, I, I was very upset. She said, Why are you mad? I said, Because you ain't put but a couple, of, ain't enough rice on my plate. It's disrespectful. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing. I still ain't seen one one in here from the Queens. See? At least the Kings, the Kings be honest. <laughs> all right all right, all right. <laughs> you read that one. that's what set all this off let's finish it up because it's only like one minute but we've been doing two minutes for 15 minutes here we go let's finish up right here here we go kansas city we had the response was <laughs> overflow we had to move <laughs> i had a sushi crisis once <laughs> okay all right just like Baltimore, we had to move it. Kansas City, we had to move the location because the Ifa Tunde Army oh. in the state of Kansas. Stop spitting all the place. Why are you yelling? And in the state of Missouri, they going crazy for the return of uh -oh, Big Papa. Been, Kansas. Been, she put two ones. <laughs> Yasmin, she, she, she said, not this one. I did one two times. <laughs> I wonder if my wife ever had it. I wonder. I, I never thought about that, but if she did, I ain't gonna like that. I only I'm scared to even ask. If you're in here watching this, don't put nothing in there. Don't even don't even reply. Someone said she had a shalom. <laughs> <laughs> Helen, Helen told the truth. That, that God bless you, Helen. Thank you so much. That's what I like to see. We try to be honest in here. Adriana said she had a Filipino crisis. <laughs> Could he box real good? Like Pacquiao? He like Lumpia? Did he used to go? I know about all that. All right. <laughs> Queens, thank you for being honest. One for the Latino crisis. <laughs> I can't believe Big Sis had a Latino crisis. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> Bigfoot, <laughs> what are you talking about? It's <laughs> so like, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, you had a burrito crisis? Okay. <laughs> JW had a, <laughs> you had a curry crisis. Right on. That's, that's cool. That's cool. Hey, that's, that's all right. You had a Cuban crisis. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely had a Latina crisis. Uh, all right, <laughs> all right. She says, "Are you sure you don't want me to post my?" No, no. <laughs> she said, "Crisis." <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. I, I'm, just gonna, I, I'm gonna get upset. I don't want to do that. All right. Let's finish this up right now before <laughs> my wife posts anything else. <laughs> 
I, I still in my uh, matzo a bone. <laughs> Twenty three years in counting, right? <laughs> you go on ahead, <laughs> do your thing, okay? <laughs> I am a crow sign. <laughs> Why you got whole set of cooks and you got a croissant crisis? That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Cook that crazy. Puerto Rican crisis? Okay. Heating crisis? What does that mean? What does that mean? The Dominican crisis? Okay. All right. No, no, don't do that. Don't encourage it. We, let's finish it up right now. We got to get up out of here. Croissant <laughs> bar crisis. Yeah, let's finish this up right now. Let's hurry up and get up out of here. <laughs> Boy, y'all crazy. All right, let, let's a uh, well a Welsh crisis. Let me get out of here right now. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good. Let's let's, let's finish up. Here we go. Let's finish. City is on fire for the return of <laughs> Big Papa. Crazy. So let me give you the new address for Kansas <laughs> okay. City. Kansas City, we will be at the Gym Theater. <laughs> Kansas City, Sunday, December 3rd, Gym Theater. G E M. G E M. G E M. Kansas City, Gym <laughs> Theater. Oh, 1615. <laughs> East 18th all. Street. No, I don't like that. 1615 that East all. 18th Street. 1615 <laughs> East, East 18th <laughs> Street, Kansas City, Kansas. You had a sugar cookie crisis. Back in <laughs> Oh, boy, y'all, wow. Well, I know, man. This, well, I tell you, my stomach's starting to hurt, too. I'm already, I'm already, I'm already crying. Ooh, you had a, a, a Joe Tess crisis after that. I said, I ain't going to bump no. <laughs> All right, let me get out of here. Woo. All right. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, these people. We're going to finish right now, literally. Just like one second. Oh, man. Woo. All right. Woo. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Boy, I ain't laughing. I mean, I laugh hard all the time on this show, but man, y'all crazy. All right. Uh, breathing all heavy. So, uh, I, I, my plan is to live stream tomorrow. Uh, uh, if we don't do it tomorrow, we'll do Wednesday. It's just I got to do this overtime. I got to figure out what day I, I'm, I'm going to do it. Uh, my, my work schedule was crazy, too. I, I had to do Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I did 36 hours. I was exhausted today. That's why it looked like this. Uh, but I got to get in at least another eight hours over the next two days. But I'm, if I do go in, I'm going to do 12 uh, so I can maximize on the overtime pay. Uh, but I'll let people know uh, by the morning time. If I'll, if I do live stream tomorrow uh, on Umar, I'll have uh, uh, the show. I'll set up the show tonight, and then you guys will see it in the morning. If I don't, then we will do it on Wednesday for sure. Okay. I want to thank everyone. Thank y'all so so much for tuning on in. I I, I appreciate y'all. I enjoy our time together, and it's hilarious. Um, Good crush chat. Even though I was kind of trolling a little bit when I said that y'all are you guys still undefeated you guys are definitely undefeated especially after tonight uh, this school scam has been going on for for 13 years now and um, again I have a degree in cyber security this is cyber crime it is all the other shenanigans are kind of like the dressing but at the core of this is uh, a cyber crime wherein the internet has been used to exploit black people to get money out of them but then also to exploit black women sexually. And you see this play itself out over and over again. This is not about helping black boys. It's not about uplifting the black community. It ain't got nothing to do with that. Because when you listen to him talk, he's not doing that. See, re the real Umar comes out in these moments, especially when he's up there in front of the trap banners, because he's up there, like we were talking about with, with Reverend Jerry Juice, he's up there to sell the illusion that he's opening up a school. But why is he selling that illusion? Not to help black boys, not to help black girls, not to uplift the black community, no. He sells that illusion, which he's been doing for over 13 years now, 
in order to get money out of people and in order to sexually exploit black women. And that's wrong. And the fact that he uses the Internet to do it, that's how you get into the cybercrime aspect of this. And that's precisely why I talk about Umar Johnson, amongst other reasons, too. But that's that's the main reason why it's been going on. He's been doing this for such a long time. I want to thank everyone. Thanks to Kid Chris Chat for tuning on in. Thanks to the mods. Thanks to everyone who liked the, the video. And if you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. Also want to thank everyone who sent in uh, super chats during uh, the live stream uh, this evening. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate all the support and I love y'all. OK, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. And as we always do. All right. Hit that like button as you exit the building. Thanks to you all again for tuning on in. Cookie Crush Chat is definitely undefeated. Let's go. MG is coming, FD, MG is coming, FD, MG is coming, is coming, FD, MG is coming, FD, MG is coming, FD, MG is coming, is coming, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, oh, it's coming, empty and G is coming, empty and G. Is coming, thought it's personality be twerking, it's twerking. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Thank y'all again uh, so much uh, for tuning on in. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and I'll talk to y'all very, very soon. All right, love y'all. Peace. <laughs>